<laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, we get copyright striked. And <laughs> it's like Cowboy Bebop, only sad and sad. Oh, what the hell? Did your little dice got turned back on? Nice. All right, I'm going to turn that on. Um, all right, so. We are playing D&D. We're, again, following the adventures of the Dawnforged Company. Our band of intrepid adventurers have been making their way around in making preparations to overthrow the King of Kern, the Mad King. Who knows if he's mad? No one knows. They haven't seen him, actually. Row, row, fight the power! Row, row, fight the power. Fight the power. Wow, we're making all the anime references today. But no JoJo's references yet, so we're okay. No. <laughs> um, I can make one. It's not hard. All right, but uh, in their um, preparations, they've gone through, they've stolen them, some things back from the Tinkerer's Guild. Um, they've uh, made some progress on getting some certain, certain things enchanted, called in an ally who's a, uh, a little mage dude who helped him out a little bit. And then uh, they've started to go around collecting the ingredients to make some... Well, I got I don't know, how'd you describe it? like riot gear almost uh, as far as like some crowd control potions, just some insane things that they can do to kind of help their cause and move their way. Yeah, closer pretend we're China. To the king. Ooh, you're not oh, that. Oh, it's topical. Haha, <laughs> like a cream. No wait, the the other tad. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the kind you have to get a cream for. <laughs> oh, sad. All right, so. Uh, before we dive in, though, uh, let's see. I just wanted to uh, take a look at everything. So, yeah, I know you guys are coming back to a different map than the one that you left, and I do apologize. I just found tried to find one that was a little more appropriate. I think I, I found one that, that kind of fits the mood a little better. Um, so I'm going to do a quick, oh, like, you know... Like, map, oh, man, I don't know, man. Oh, <laughs> quick, oh, fuck, man. Oh, we fucked up, dude. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. There's more details and more immersion. What the fuck, Ty? I know, I know. Oh, you're all stand up for it. I'm scared. Rocks fall, everyone does. <laughs> <laughs> There's all a right. Tarask here, and I don't like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that... Just ignore that. <laughs> all <right>. No! <laughs> all right, so, uh, but Why getting started... Why is in here? Jesus. My name's Lara. <laughs> Lara! Oh, sorry. <laughs> Moving on, sorry. Right, that's okay. That's okay. All right, so uh, we're gonna rewind about like kind of like just five minutes in game time where you guys are sneaking up on them, on uh, this this my goodness lot. Because I remember you guys were making really good perception checks, and uh, yeah, you guys were killing it. And so you guys have been following this kind of glowing trail of uh, these spores that kind of lay, hang lightly in the air, being kind of careful to bat the larger ones away. You all made your uh, constitution checks, so you didn't have to worry about any of the other weird things that might have happened. And so as you guys are, are coming up uh, on this, can I get a just a quick stealth check from everybody? And then a perception check for what you see in this particular cavern as you come up to it. Doing good. <laughs> oh boy. Stealth check stealth. and a what? Perception. Perception. I was doing so well last game with my stealth checks. God damn. Oh god. Okay, hold um, on, I gotta click this button. Hold on, Ty. Oh, uh, do I have advantage because I'm in my black suit? No. <laughs> hold on, Ty. I, uh, I might be using luck for that. <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> Mike, this is might incredible. as well not bother. I mean, I also oh, got yeah. a fucking fail on the You stealth, got a crit so. fail, too. Okay. So. okay so. No, because so. it could balance it out. If it's a group check, it just needs more passes and fails. <laughs> yeah. Let me take... I have three I'll use. I'm going to be using one. Okay. That's what my plan anyway. Let me All just right. Don't make it here. In. Sorry. Now roll a two instead of one. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. I have one point left. I am not Ooh. using it. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So, um. But I'm going to see who sees me. <laughs> yeah. You got, your perception went okay. <laughs> For most. You guys of want me to spend a luck point and reroll? Uh, so luck points, not, I looked it up. I'm you can only use it. them for yourself. Uh, but if you if you want to, I yes. have luck points. Yeah, you have. You should have three. Like, I'm, I'm asking luck. the group if they would like me to re-roll mine. Yeah, probably. I, I've only got okay. one, so I got it. No I'm problem. not going to be using it for the stealth. All right, here we go. Thirteen. Okay. Still way better. <laughs> yeah. It could could be worse. All yeah, right. Worse. And so as you guys are, are walking out uh, in this tunnel, you kind of. Uh, seeing the glow start to get brighter and brighter as you get close to this this mouth of a down further down the tunnel, and then all of a sudden you see uh, <laughs> um, Tazir. She's like, "Ah, oh, fuck, not right now." 
And as she flames out of existence, the snake once again falls from about her head height and lands on the floor and just looks up. And unable to hold it in, Uzo's like, Holy shit! <laughs> oh, fire snake! Oh. Oh. And the fire snake just looks oh, around no. and kind of nods intelligently and looks around. And then uh, with your perception checks, um, you see uh, ahead of you, just what? floating uh, uh, this, this blind eye in every eye is mooned over and glazed. This haunting <laughs> figure, the two of you recognize the, the um. general shape and it just floats around. And ah. I'm just grabbing Blood Scale's arm it's... in a silent, but definitely. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. It's drifting quietly towards the entrance of the cave. The rest of you looking around, you see uh, that there's a bunch of. there's The walls are completely covered in mushroom, and the spores lay th are, are thick in the air. And you see, uh, looking around, actually, you can see you guys did well enough to see these. They're, they seem to be in small groups along the wall. Um, you see some are larger and clearly, like, standing in front of smaller ones. And in the middle of the room, you see this gigantic one. He's standing very tall. You see occasionally spores. It has eyes. And it turns and looks almost directly at Uza and tilts its head as another gas cloud. Sorry. You want me to cast Minor Illusion? <laughs> and as you, uh, what would you guys like to do? If you guys want, I can cast minor illusion and get their attention sixty feet away from us. Baby, um, you're muted. Yeah, just let me know where you're gonna do it. I'll, I can cast thaumaturgy, so there's some sound with it. It just set things blind. Stage whispering. The we minor stage, stage whispering. whispering. Uh, stage I take whispering. it as written. If you're if you're in stealth, I just take it all as stage whispering, unless you shout. Okay. So um, if you're if you're breaking stealth, you have to shout. That's the way I've always I've always taken it. Okay. Yeah, while cool. this is going on, I'm going to just go ahead and cast thaumaturgy and hang it behind the beholder so it turns around. Perfect. And as you ping, uh, what do you want it to do with your thaumaturgy? What does it sound like? What's it doing? Uh. Basically, whispering voices that, no, you go over there. And uh, so you cast it over there, and then, um, TJ, what are you doing? Just so you guys know, concert? since I have uh, uh, smell, spell sniper, I have, like, double range on a lot of this, on a lot of the cantrips and stuff, so I can get them further away from us <laughs> if and, uh, that's what we want. As you, as you release the voices. Also, um, minor illusion comes with uh, sounds. Of course, yeah. Um, and then, oh, um, I, th I thought it was silent. Uh, that silent image. That's uh, yeah, sound uh, or image. All right, While so... they're deciding this, like I got that as like an instant distraction. Perfect. And as you throw it, you hear the whisperings, and you see the the two of the larger ones near the wall take a step towards it, as they're kind of looking at it, and they're kind of tilting and glancing. And you see one look, and then this he leans back, and then this jet of spores flies out and hangs in the air where the air voices are and then drifts to the ground. They're kind of like this glowing green spore with like a gold halo around it that kind of glows as it hits the ground. And then it, 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 it turns around, it looks, looks over at the other one, looks back at the spot, looking up. And then this thing just drifts a little closer. Hey guys, if you want, I can use an assassinate immolation on that fucking boulder. <laughs> what to do i'm just at you. this point everybody make a perception check fuck um you. i'm gonna hold an act or make an intelligence check actually i apologize fuck uh, me. hey ty so i'm gonna hold an action of a of an arrow attack for, cool. Doing good uh, against that beholder perfect and uh, case, uh, anybody does any kind of aggressive act perfect and uh, as you as you are all readying attacks against this beholder zephyr you look at it you're like Wait a minute, that's not a beholder. It looks really close to one. That. Whoops. And it's all to save, not an intelligence check. Doesn't, that's still a two. Is it? No, that was mine. His, yeah. Um, and so you recognize it. This is actually a gas spore. It's a giant kind of spore that is, is kind of used as almost a defense mine. Um, 
again with a lot of these kind of underdark creatures and if you know if you know they're they're super fragile and if they pop there's deadly disease and poison that live within them that is just waiting to be re uh, spit out onto people who come to I... attack it's an early Cause warning I system quickly just like grab people and I'm like, I'm like that's not a beholder and I explain what it is and I'm can like, you try to talk to the plants uh, Let me see sounds can... great yeah Okay, do whatever. I'm standing here and not doing much. So I cast. There's more. You see, also see. Kind of... uh, okay, see. Speak with plants. Perfect. And let's see. Um. So thirty feet. Yeah. So. Is there, how tall is this cave? This cave is about a, a 60 foot ceiling. So I want to fly up and over the cloud if possible. Okay. Um, so as you're looking around, you notice the, the cloud is thick and looking up, you can't figure out how it's this thick and you see clinging to the ceiling are many uh, other different types of mushrooms that are just sl slightly every once in a while, they, they glow with this bright blue energy and they shake, releasing more spores down keeping the entire chamber just an entire cloud of spores. So I'm going to try to fly around as much as I can. Perfect. And this one will float over here. Go ahead and uh, ping out a spot where you'd like to be. Okay. And then as soon as I get into that range, I'm going to cast Speak with Plants. Perfect. Um, where are you at? I want to move right here. Perfect. Okay, go ahead and move your token. Um, go ahead, sorry. I'm, I'm just going to cast Shield of Faith from my um, uh, Moonblade onto Zephyr. Perfect. And so that is a up to 10 minutes. You have a bonus 2 plus to your AC. All right, so, and as you, you cast it, all of a sudden, um, they're, they're silent looking around. Let me see, 30. It's... Okay, yeah. And as you move I'm gonna forward. Fly, I'm going to fly in there with her, kind of up at an equal height. And just try and stay away from as much as I can, just, just in case shit goes south. Perfect. And then as you, um, you guys float in, you see another small colony of these strange creatures uh, hanging out in the other side of the room. And another s gas spore just kind of making its way around. Um, and as you cast it, all of a sudden you see the, the silent looks that they're exchanging, and you suddenly hear voices. The two to your left, um, suddenly you just hear them. And there is nothing there. The voices are gone, and we've been gifted with a presence. They kind of both tilt their head looking at you. The largest one, he's kind of on this this like little like tiered mound, and he steps down to the second tier, and he is tall. He's like eight feet, eight and a half, ten feet tall. And he kind of or no, and then he kind of like leans down and he's like he turns and he looks at you and or sorry, you're flying. He just stands and he, he looks at you straight in the eye and he's like Hello, little one. Be careful, you are disturbing the sport. Um, I very slowly kind of and gently drop down with my hands up and I go, I mean, you guys no harm. Then none shall become you. As long as you seek peace, we shall have peace. And you see, um, now looking around, you see these two things that look like mushrooms almost. They kind of start to almost separate from the, the largest, the large mound around him. And you see that they're, they're kind of these two, like almost like dog looking um, creatures with long limbs. They look like a combination of almost like an ape and a dog. And you can see under, they, they're completely covered oh, with mushrooms, eyes widened over as well. Uh, one of one of them's mouth is kind of like the jaws broken and hanging to the side. And a, a, there's a long mushroom growing out of that as well. And you see they, they, they both, just kind of move, but don't seem to be quite there. Actually, with your 20, you know that they are not... They are... You, they, they were dead at one point, but now they are 
moving once more. Okay, um, well, uh, I guess I'll tell you why I'm here. I'm here looking for these specific uh, types of spores, and I start describing them. Perfect, and, uh, and you list off. Um, and then he, as you're listing off these spores, he's like, ah, the hallucination spores. Normally a defense mechanism. We do not part with these, mainly as they will lead to violence in many creatures. What makes you worthy of this gift? May we have a promise that this is for non-violent purposes. And, uh, and as he's talking, just pff, another little cloud uh, rubs from him, and he's like, and then he, as he, he's talking to you, he then looks over your shoulder to the rest of you, and he's like, uh, do they wish to speak as well? I wave. <laughs> like, uh, and then slowly just a single hand comes up. Doesn't wave, but it just comes up and then goes back down slowly. I think uh, that's good. We can speak with them. I no. Hey Ty, you're breaking up really bad. Yeah, oh, sorry. I can't really hear. <laughs> they're too quiet. Yeah. Like, we can speak with them if they wish. We have communication spores for report. Yeah, that that would be wonderful. Tell them to come nearer. I motion to. All right, really quick. I want to do an insight check. Perfect. Do an insight check. Jesus. Hard to read. He's got no face. <laughs> Mainly these, his eyes are, are are just kind of black spheres with inside of his um, his kind of fungusy face, and and it's hard to read. But you don't you don't feel like there's any malicious intent. Okay, so I, I motion them forward with two fingers and just kind of give them that. Come closer. It's okay. Look. They want I, to speak with us all. I uh, puff up my chest and wander over like, you know, hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> I already, um, like, I'm as waving. they come closer, I say, I can't guarantee that these won't be used in a battle, but. but hey, Ty, I, we can I, see you measuring, just so you know. Yeah, I know. I need to measure. That's fine. Oh, no, you can turn it off to where we can't see it. Oh, I know. Okay. Um, it's ominous. So ominous. I, I say I can't guarantee that these won't be used in battle, but as a druid, I seek balance and I seek to restore a balance that has been struck from the dwarven city. We wish to free people. We wish to have the greatest amount of happiness for the greatest number of people. You see, he kind of like looks down and looks to the uh, Our enemies are cunning, and we must be more cunning. But if they are Honestly, colony, and you are not a colony, how do you tell them what is best? We don't tell them. We listen and try and help them achieve what they ask for. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Um, one thing real quick. So, since you're the only one who came up, uh, you see he kind of leans forward, and then off of his shoulder, uh, he there's a, you see this one um, kind of like um, jet of his. It looks like kind of chitinous, uh, and it's it's kind of surrounded. It, it, you see it, he like almost inhales, and then <laughs> these light pink spores <laughs> kind of float, and um, they kind of get into... Um, <laughs> Yeah, both you and Uza. Mm. All of a sudden, um, after the spores hit you, you um, you suddenly can hear the speaking of the mic in it as well. He Got threw you. a spore at me? He threw a cloud of spores in your general area. Is there any way I could dodge it? I don't I know what that it's is. Okay. She, she didn't, though. No, she did. She I don't said she it was okay and, and waited she would. And for it. So don't worry, he's trying to communicate. As, as you try to like dodge out of the way, you see, he looks over, and he, he kind of nods gently, and then off he holds out his hand, and then beckons you forward. 
I kind of look at, at Zephyr and... It's okay. He's trying to communicate. <sighs> okay, fine. At this point, Mesnos also comes up. Still flying. Still flying. And as Still you're flying, flying um, as you fly... Spores. Uh, as he reaches out his hand, he uh, and as you... He kind of like gestures for you to land, then waits a second. I'll perch on one of those rocks, but I'm ready to take off, and, and I've unknocked an arrow, but I still have my bow in my hand. Perfect, and with that, another cloud. And then this time, as it is, you, you, it gets into, it smells like kind of dusty, but also with this hint of, like, this, like, backing of, of it's like a honey scent, almost, and it's, and all of a sudden, as you, you kind of, like, shake your head, uh, all of a sudden, you can hear the mic in it, and you hear the, the conversation that's going on, and he's like, Do not worry. We seek peace above all things. And I, yeah, no. peace is great. Well, like I said, our, uh, I can't, I won't <laughs> lie to you. I plan on using these in battle, but my intentions are noble, and I seek a balance. And need you this desperately. And uh, meanwhile, blood scales in the background. You see the snake kind of looking up at you and looking over at the 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 group. And you, uh, <laughs> and it just kind of like slithers up next to you and just kind of like coils up and watches what's happening. Oh, so blood scale, actually having an idea, takes his war pick, mm -hmm. but holds it upside down. as like coil. Coils it nods around the metal and bits. then coils around the the metal, and uh, just kind of sits and waits to be taken. I will very very slowly, like five feet every thirty seconds, start crawling over there. <laughs> Try not to make any noise. Perfect. And as you're, you're trying to, yes, you you make your way slowly. Um, the Mykonid sovereign looks down at, at sh the the group of you, and he's like. I propose a meld where we all think is one. That Sorry, I you cut now, bro. <laughs> Damn it! It's way such way a fun out. voice, but I can't do it. Okay, I'll I... do it louder. <laughs> all right. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumper. Red you leather, know you yellow need leather, leather. Red <laughs> leather, yellow leather. You know you I need rush. unique New York. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, great eight, great gray geese gazing gaily over Greece. That one's weird. Woohoo! My food is here. All right. Um, but as the is the mic and it, he he looks out over you, and uh, he's you see he's just patiently waiting as as Bloodscale is making his way You're about here, and then <laughs> um, this thing is is floated kind of over in this general area, sitting on top of of this thing. It's just making slowly rounds, almost wafted around by the spores around it. Uh, Don't care, still going slow. Don't trust it. Uh, one of the other smaller Mykonids comes over to you. It nods and then holds out its hand and waits for you. I'll take it. Is it squishy? Uh, no, no. As you, you reach out for a, a, a cloud of spores releases, and then all of a sudden, that same for you, that stale honey scent kind of in your nose, and then as you you like blink for a second, you, you suddenly hear it. The Sovereign would meld with you. With all of you. Any gestures to the rest of the group? Sorry, it cut out when you said, it said the Sovereign would blank with all of you. And I was very like, oh no. The Sovereign, oh, the sovereign would that's meld possibly with you. ominous. All of you. And he kind of gestures See, into Brandon the See, Brandon yelled over at that time, so I didn't yep. catch it again. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he said meld with you. And as you make your way closer, you hear the, the bigger, deeper voice of the this sovereign. And he just says, I would meld with all of you. That way I would know your minds. We would think as one and know no, whether no, no. your cause yeah. is... Are you yeah, fucking... Man. Hold on, let me yeah. fucking deal with this. Put, you, put the microphone inside of your mouth. Dude, it is like... <laughs> 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 That was rock solid, baby. Didn't want right, to, but heard so all. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try a few things. And hold on one second. Check 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 check. No, no, no. Clear that. All right. Hello. 
Where is Mosh? I, I would teach you. I would, I would mail with you. Okay, okay I, see I see what's, what's happening. happening. All right. Okay, I see oh. what's happening. Sorry. All right, so. <laughs> fucking... It's not all worked out there, buddy. Yeah, it's just when I do a certain, like, for some reason, no matter, like, if I do certain voices, it's like, that's background noise, so fuck you. <laughs> so, like, I just can't, I can't be too, like, um, uh, for too long. And, or else it's like, nope, that's background noise, just stop. <laughs> like, so, all right, we'll try this again. <sighs> I would meld with your minds. All of us thinking is one, so I would know your real purpose is before I would release such a treasure to those not of the colony. I would say that you can meld with me, but this really has nothing to do with my compatriots. Well, I would be the only one using these ingredients. You are all of colony, and all of you would be receiving this gift. So all must meld, or none may have. What, what, what does melding mean? What, what does that then? A um, meld is a form... Uh, do you want to... Uh, make an intelligence check. Me? Yeah. Yo, uh, check, not safe. Not check. Whoa, somebody's eating something with a wrapper? It's very loud. <laughs> I don't know. It's okay, they'll mute soon. Me and Jess just pointed at each other. That's funny. Alright, so let's see. What's the, what's your intelligence modifier? Uh three. Three? Okay. So okay, so it works. Alright, and then so uh, as you were you're you're trying to think of meld, um you think it it's gotta be something about Nope, you're not. You're not sure. And so, um, as uh, as you ask the question, he's like, uh, "When we meld, we become one in thought and not in body." Though, as he he not, he he kind of sees some weird looks, especially on Mesnos's face. And he's like, uh, "Our consciousness come together and witness what may be and react to what is. They are that a shared dream." We do it as entertainment, social I interaction. I look at everybody else and I say, these ingredients would greatly help if you guys are willing. Just warn them that there might be three dragons. In the uh, so, <laughs> some of our compatriots have interesting minds right now. Uh, Many inside Just one. Just cut out that time. Many inside one. That's weird. She didn't come out so, for me. <laughs> you guys hear me? Yeah, we. Yeah, can, I can go. hear you. You're good. Uh, so I, you're be aware out for me. I'm pausing while I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's start again. Start from hot staff. <laughs> that wasn't some sass, I'm sorry. I was just <laughs> trying to me when work. you're asking me to get my brain to a spore. Hot sass, <laughs> coming in. Wouldn't even right. stab a guard for me. So I say, uh, <laughs> I just want you to know that this one houses many minds within just his mind. I want you to be aware that all of us are slightly different from normal primary plane creatures. Mm. And as you wave, the he his gaze shifts. You're not sure how you know, but rather than the tilting of his massive head, but you see, notice the black eyes now staring at you, uh, and he's like, "And do your you are a colony within one? Does your colony agree to this?" I I can't ask them readily. Very well. I leave the decision to you, but we will not invade spaces. Only request that they join us. As long as I'm there too, it should be okay. Very well. Also, this snake here is one of us too. The snake just looks and nods. And you see uh, um, 
one of the Mykonids try to blast some spores to it, but you see it's breathing just this constant little fumes of fire. And then all of a sudden, it shakes its head, blinks a few times, and nods again. If everybody's in agreement, I... Yes, we would very much like this. Very well. And then he steps down this... And then others oh. come, and they start to form a small circle around all of you. Well, you notice these are mainly the, the kind of larger grown ones. They all start to come out of, like, uh, from the back as well. And they all start to form just a nice little circle around you. You know, I, I just want to say this to the group, for the record. Super not cool with this. Hey, uh, as we turn into spores. We're not turning oh. into spores. We're going to put anything yes. spores. And then uh, as you say this, the, the sovereign looks to you. I would not invade a place I am not welcome. That in itself is violence, which we will not inflict unless we are using it to defend. Are you not comfortable, one of the colony? What I mean, as long as you plan on letting me go. You plan on letting me go? We have no reason to keep you here. That's not it. no. If you could just say no. Yeah. No, we will not keep you against your will. Okay. Well, that is an act of violence as well. <laughs> 13? He's got a mushroom <laughs> face. I mean... <laughs> fucking mushroom <laughs> face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Perfect. I'm just kind of looking at the group and like, is this normal? I don't, it. I don't yes. know. I don't, ah, this isn't fucking normal, but what usually is with us. <laughs> sure, let's do this. Let's get right. high on some spores. Let's get all jacked up on spores. Yeah! Let's do some, let's do some shrooms, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god, I'm gonna uh, get stuck living in a cave again. Living in a cave again. No. <laughs> Alright, so as they, they start to um, coalesce ar around all of you, um, it is a little uncomfortable as you're just kind of at every, every step waiting for something to kind of go wrong. But <laughs> as the spores are released around you guys, they're this light white spore that just kind of drifts around in the circle. And as it kind of gets, it has like a kind of like a as it hits your head, you almost feel your head start to swim almost instantly, as if you're getting slightly sleepy, but also energized at the same time. And your eyes start to droop. And you see all the Before other... I, pass out, I have a question. Yeah. That is a cool effect. Thank you. How, how much is this like the orc one? Not at all. The orc Damn. one was suddenly asleep and violently awakened again. This is more of a... I, I feel just good. don't know if I'm going to get addicted to this one, too. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but as the, uh, the the spores make their way into you, you feel them kind of... The energy hits you, and then the lethargy of brain and body as you start to... You see all of the, the other Mykonids start to sit down around you, and almost you can... Can I slowly put down the war pick before I pass out? <laughs> Yes, yeah, and if you, as you guys are, are, are starting to go to sleep, you can you can adjust yourselves as um, as you feel appropriate. I don't want to drop Taz. <laughs> and as you I drop, I have my uh, staff in front of me on my lap. Perfect, and uh, you you, have, you put your staff across your uh, your lap as you, you sit down. You see, um, uh, Kasai, the snake, start to wave a little bit and then kind of curl in, a little adorable snake style. Puts his his head underneath one of his his coils and uh as you clutch your bow um there's a sense of calm that comes with the spores and it's hard and you it, like every once in a while you feel your group listen, loosening and and you lent, wrench back to it it's hard to give up the instinct to just fight the feeling as it slowly works its way and all of a sudden you don't feel yourself fall asleep you don't even close your eyes but in front of you, the world seems to ripple for a second. And then, all together, you see this vast scape of color that's 
pulsing in and out. But it's light, gentle, it's not violent. It gives you this calming feeling as you look into it. Everything suddenly feels okay. You feel yourself kind of succumbing to this new feeling. The sounds of the caverns around you slowly fade. And you feel yourself lifted as though you're floating in this new scape of sound and light. And together you feel all of yourselves, not just yourself anymore, but you feel yourself in many bodies. You feel as one as all of you, you look at all of your hands at once. You look at the world around you as the, the amazing scape fades a little bit and you see from every eye, but not with confusion, with unity, as all of you look the same directions, looking around at the spores falling through the air, looking into every face at the same time. Blood scale. Yeah. You and the rest, actually, all of you feel this. You feel a slight ripple coming from the blood scale body that you now all share. Um, you hear just the faintest whispers. You can't quite make them out. But you remember, of course, it's the three. I hope they join us. And then all of a sudden you feel and see almost this splash of silver as one joins, then a splash of blue, and finally a splash of purple as your all mind becomes, gathers more together. Looking into Mesnos, as you all suddenly turn, you see a fire behind his eyes. You see him in his true form standing, book in hand, looking at the book, and you're all looking at the book. And in the book, there's letters, and they seem to dance around the page as you're looking down before they congeal. And there's spells. There are the spells that he uses for his warlock casting. And as you start to flip through the pages, you start to see a story. A story of a demon desperately trying to find help and get his daughter out of hell to hire adventurers to go and save her and about how he sent them too late and as you're reading all of a sudden your mind shift once again as you close the book and you hold it closely to your mesno's body you feel yourself now in the body the uza body the unnamed body the bot the body that seeks names and then you feel the tension in the body and suddenly you relax it and release it forgetting why it was there in the first place you think to lightning and thunder flashing between your eyes the hallucination sparkling as it flies through the air but now the lightning seems to sparkle and glitter rather than uh, and leave trails of the the sparkling spores behind it and as you reach out the lightning comes and hits you in the in your Uza hand, and you press it to your forehead, lean back, and you feel a warmth grow in your chest. You look enjoying the exploration. You look to the Mykonid sovereign body. The body that is yours, but all of yours, as you are all one. Feeling it, you feel the uh <laughs> Almost, right? Uh, looking towards the, the Sovereign, you feel in that body no organs. And you're not used to organs, but you are. But you're not. And you feel the overwhelming urge for peace. This need and want that the world might all get together and be in harmony one day. And you feel a sadness at the same time. A sadness of knowledge that it cannot be. And then your Zephyr body. You feel a resistance looking towards your Zephyr body. You feel 
and can see a hallucination of greens, colors splash before your vision as you're looking. But you also see a small splash of gold, an aura of gold rising from the staff, and it becomes one of your thought. And it brings a smile and a light-hearted warmth, an idea of hope springing from the staff into now your completeness. And looking at the Viser body, the heart underneath your clothes, you pull it back and see it beats readily and the spores are attaching and collecting around it. And you feel a presence come out of the heart and instead of joining, floats away. It's gold with a ruby red center to it as it glows and drifts away and at this point you suddenly feel tired and each of you individually starts feeling your own body again and as you're separating and falling falling and getting heavier and heavier into your own body and suddenly your eyes open yourself once again looking around at the myconid and now the weather <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I think if this turns into Night Vale or Desert Bluffs really fast. <laughs> <laughs> My Night Vale one-off is, is far down the road, though. <laughs> oh no, I just meant, if this goes well, Night Vale. If this goes bad, we're in Desert Bluffs. <laughs> you know, that's fair. And then, uh, so you all um, kind of awaken from this experience. The sewers sound kind of working their way back. Uh, you still feel the, the lightness of the, the, the music, the small humming in your ears start to slowly fade as the experience drops you back into your own body. And you're left with just the sound of the dripping sewers. What the fuck was that? Not loose. Uh, I checked for the heart. The heart's still there, but the... It's now become... As you're looking at the heart, there's no longer the vines and everything that, that dig into your body. It's just formed into a large rose, the heart seemingly gone. And it is now um, made of this beautiful gold. And the flower itself has become rubies. It's more of a, it has now become a decorative, it's like a decorative pin with no more heart inside of it. Okay, I uh, pin it on the outside of my... And uh, as you go to pin it, you feel an urge to look at your sword. You're not sure why. All right, check it out. And so as you pull out the, the handle of your sword, you see uh, it also has changed just slightly. The the golds have become much more of a luster to them. And um, as you're, you're looking at it, there is a space for the flower to be placed. at the It's in the middle of the hilt between the two. Sorry, could you repeat the last part? One, uh, it's one. it's uh, there's a place like so in the hilt where it comes out, mm. right in the the center of the hilt. There is a, a place where you could place the flower. Okay, I, I slot it right on in there. But as you as you slide it in, it it there's no resistance that it. it like magnetizes almost to it. it. It pulls it in, and then the the blade flares. And you've unlocked Ooh. another little bit of the sword. Yeah! Sweet. So, the Sunblade of the mean? Rose Knight. Uh, now, you can ca cast the spell Shield once a day as well. That's cool. Sick, nasty. Uh, what level? Uh, just it's uh, just the standard level. I think it's a level th th two or three spell. Just it's it's normal level. So. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Shield is a reaction that will save your bacon. <laughs> Yeah, it's a reaction that gives you plus four to your AC. Oh, yeah. It's a four or five? Uh, let me pull it up. I think it's five. I think you're right. <laughs> it's a bit. It's quite a bit. So, sh oh, God damn it. Shield. Here we go. Yep, plus five. Nice. Yeah, so basically as a reaction, you can trigger a plus five to your AC. Sweet. Yes. and uh, First level abjuration. And uh, what is uh, everybody else doing? I'm staring at the 
Sovereign. Slowly picking the war pick back up. As you pick it up, sure the Sleepy Snake doesn't fall off. Sleepy Snake yawns and then like wraps around super tight and goes back to sleep, hugging the the pickaxe. That's fair. I'm just yeah. checking to make sure my bow and daggers and my stuff's still here. As you're checking the bow and the daggers, you notice the warmth in your chest hasn't faded. It feels comfortable. But everything is there. Nothing's been robbed. The other Mykonids start to stand up and make their way uh, back to the what they were doing before. And uh, as you stare at the, the Mykonid Sovereign, he, he stares back and he's, his head is tilting and you see he's just thinking. And then finally he nods to you. His giant head uh, and it's some spores tipping off the top of it. There is a purpose and yours is great. Our gift is yours. And with that um, he's like what would you carry the spore in? Um, I am pretty sure my I have a few potion bottles yeah I think you have like th three or four? Oh, you used you used some well, you used two to scoop up the stuff in the, the beginning so you have two left I believe if I remember yeah, I, have two of I them. recently drank two potions can I give her the bottles you can sweet ah. I'll give her the two bottles thank you so now I got how many bottles of four. Perfect. And, uh, as, open bottle. So he reaches uh, out his. Uh, here, please present the vessels. I hold out the potion bottles. And he and he just reaches out and he he opens his hand over the top of them, and then these small gouts of spore just start to pour into the the bottles, and then they fill up. And then at the very end, he waves the spores away from your face. It is done. Oh, and then he reaches out again and he waves his hand over the top of the bottles and these thick mushrooms grow out of the top, sealing them. That is extremely kind, thank you. You are seeking to do more good. Bring the kindness and fight the sadness that we felt. You I... have been worthy of this gift. And he starts yeah. to make his way back. So I just wrote four sovereign spore bottles. Perfect. Uh, hallucination spore. And then you can put in parentheses sovereign. All right. Um. Oh, cool. I got a crap ton of spores now. Who spores? Who spores? Um, um, during during all that, sorry, I'm gonna interject real quick. Um, I'm gonna be mostly focusing on Mesnos. Okay. See what he's doing and see how he's reacting to knowing that. Well, you guys look we over. Saw. We all know. <laughs> As you guys look over to Mesnos, he's sitting down still, and he's kind of like holding his arms, hugging himself, looking at the ground. Let's go. Don't care. Yeah, right, buddy. I, um, I think so. Um, I don't know what to do with this. Um, and he, as he leans back, you see he's holding a big book in his arms. Um, uh, I have this now. I, I fear it, but I. And as you're looking at it, it's bound in this deep black leather with stitching across it. Um, it's got this heavy chain, and as you're looking at the chain, it connects directly to Mesnos. It's bound to his arm, and you see it is. it has a heavy lock on one side. And you see him trying to open it, and he's looking around, he's like, I do not have the key. I've got some, and I'm going to pull out my lockpicks, but... We can we can do that not surrounded by a bunch of spore people. Probably a good call. Okay, okay. 
I could also probably maybe break that chain. He catches you, um, Zephyr. As you're looking at him, you see he gives you a few worried glances as he's trying. He's holding the book and he kind of like he like pulls it in again and starts looking around. I kind of don't know how to talk to him, so I just kind of avoid eye contact. Um, do I recognize the tome as like normal to him? Since I've seen his form before, like you do I recognize that it was attached to him before. Yes, you recognize it as before, and um, part of his true form. You saw there were chains binding all around his robes, and even chains holding the mask almost, or his hood almost shut. And those same chains were connected. All of them seem to be connected and coming out of this book in his true form. I, uh, like, instead of looking at him, I look at my staff. Just kind of twirl it in my hands because I felt it's like golden energy earlier. And as you look at it, there are three new flowers around the the original blue flower that um, there are now three golden ones flanking it. That's new. I examine it a bit more closely as we're walking. Perfect. Okay, uh, go ahead and make an ins uh, investigation. Oh, no, make a. Yeah, let's do a perception check. What well, skill's gonna give the sovereign a little bow before he leaves? Because you know that's what you do. <laughs> the sovereign nods to you as you bow. You let's see blood scale do that and do it too. I give the fanciest bow I could possibly manage. Make a uh, let's do a performance check just to see how fancy this is. Yeah. <laughs> see how in boy. sync we are. Bio. And it is pretty damn fancy. I mean, you're just both of you, uh, and like as you, as you go to, you give you're the biggest so, flourish, um, and you actually, actually, I'm gonna use my rings, you know, oh. my little violin rings, to do Perfect. a little tune with it to give me. Okay, uh, go ahead. Next noise time, in here, you dumb <laughs> okay, uh, next time, call it before the performance check. But okay, uh, okay. and so as you, uh, you guys hear just this, and you. you yeah, in sync with the music, a flourish and a bow, um, and like your as you your cape billows behind you as you do, uh, but then Zephyr, going for a different approach, goes for the straight up, the most proper regal bow, and then back up, and then as she does, she swirls her her fur, her front in front of, her foot in front of her, and makes a line in the spores that kind of flurry up around her. I spin my and then fur. float back down to the ground. As, uh, so what do I need to roll for my staff check? Oh, perception. Ah, Jesus. And so looking at it, you're trying to figure out what the other three could be. Because you were fairly certain that you knew what the one was. And you're trying to remember gold. What was gold? Who could gold be? Is it somebody? Is it something? And you just lead yourself into more and more questions as you're looking at it. I tuck it away for now. Um, well, I'm using it as a walking stick, but Perfect. I kind of focus more on getting and, everybody uh, back. And uh, as you were focusing on it, it did feel a little warmer in your hands, a little more comfortable as you start using it. And using it as a walking stick, it almost seems to pull you forward. It makes climbing not just easier because it's a stick, but the ground seems to be just, you know it. You don't have to look. You're at one with the, your environment around you, even here in the Underdark. Well, so now that we have the ingredients for this, the final ingredients are by the mountains. All right, let's get out of here first. Perfect. And uh, so who wants to lead the way to get everybody on? I'll walk second since I... Well, everybody has dark vision. I'll march out of here, why not? I'll just do 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 <laughs> No just... problem here, we solved the problem, there's no more bad guys. <laughs> I'm just gonna walk along next to Bloodscale and just kind of give him that look of, what the fuck was the bowing? What? What What the fuck is today? I don't know. Why, why am I the one that has to know all the things? I don't know, because... I don't like... either! <laughs> I just bowed because he was like their king, and that's like what you do, right? No, no, like, I get yours, I just, like, then it got out of hand, and then there was a tune, and I just... Oh, that's, that's, that's my Sarah being my Sarah. I thought you knew this already. That's, that's yeah. no different than any other day. 
I don't know. I just mind melded with a bunch of plants, and I don't feel comfortable with that. I or maybe either. I do. I don't know. I don't either. I don't even know. Uh. Uh. I'm guys, also. I use my plants so often. Um. Let's be happy we didn't have to my... fight them. That probably would have sucked. I'm really maybe glad we that we held off for a second because I was about to shoot that thing in its would've beholder died. face. Probably. We would have died. That is a gas bubble, essentially, and it would have killed us all. Yeah. Oh shit! With yes. your with your with your intelligence check, you would have known that the um, it's not just a poison; it's a disease that those things carry, and most people die within twelve hours of breathing them in. Oh it my god! It carries a disease, and uh, you would disease. be dead before the day is out. Half a day goes by, you'll be dead. That's... Not to have that gun. Okay. Um, well, I've got some major personal reflection. To do Let's with how quick to violence I am. <laughs> Let's be grateful that they were peaceful. And yeah, as yeah. everybody starts walking towards the mountains, um, are we walking towards the mountains? Perfect. So, um, I need a. Uh... Uh, let's see what would be a nature check for you guys to try to figure out. Uh, are you guys going back to the city and then out to the outside, or are you trying to find your way directly to the outside, um, just by yourselves? Because uh, we already got directions before we left. Yes, yeah, but I um, just want to know where you. I just want need to know where, like, what the plan is. Are we Bypass still the city? Are we okay. still like in disguise? Look like dwarves, right? I should look like an orc still, right? Uh, let's see how long ago. Let's see. I think everybody should still be. Yeah, because nobody did any violence or anything. Um, and I think it was just illusions. And so we figure out the fastest route. It wasn't. It, it was seeming from fence. seeming. That's right. So that's eight yeah. hours. So you guys are about three hours into your eight hours of seeming. Okay. So Thank you. Further away we go, like I pull Uza aside. I'm like, Uza, will you check your map and see if it's faster for us to go back through the city or? around um i have not drawn anything for the caves well we got directions um so you do have a, a small map um actually of current and everything that you did the the press of and uh, oh yeah that's right and i i guess i open up the um the 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 leather thing perfect your uh your scrolls sure. of endless paper yes and uh, so as you, you open it up uh, and you, you pull it out and you see these, there's uh, basically the map of the city with the rub and a bunch of secret tunnels. And you see the tunnels, most of them start from the city and move outwards, but there is a small network out and then you start to recognize um, a few of them. You, you see if, if you go head towards the city, you can find some of the tunnels on this map, but for right now you're outside of the mapped area. Yeah, I just, uh, I I don't know. We might just want to play it safe and loop back to the city. Okay. And then leave. I mean, we're still in disguise. What's? Yeah. I have a question. What could it hurt? I have a question, everybody. Hi. Our blood scale. Hi. Question. Hi, blood scale. Um. We gotta get stuff done pretty quick, right? Yes. Most of you can fly, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's. Can we just get out of the city and fly there? Sure. Work. Wouldn't that be faster than trying to climb a mountain? Well, yeah. That that was part of my intention. Somebody make me a giant bird. I can make you fly. I can just make you fly. I oh, don't know, that seems weirder than just being a bird. It feels like a bird would know how to fly, and I'm just like... It surprisingly comes naturally. You! <laughs> what the wind! You do, I'm just so saying, I, I didn't have wings at one you... point, and then it did. And then it was like, yeah, this, this is how they work. I I can... You're a dragon! I can change I'm a it. land dragon! Well, then you'll be an air dragon! I won't be an air dragon! I there? also can help you fly. <laughs> Wait, should we talk about that book at all? No. 
No, you want, not even you want me to try to break that chain? No. I could probably no. just try to open it. Okay, he said no. no. All right. He said no. There's Daddy? much fear in this. This is not a thing of this realm. This is not a no, thing fear of this is the mind killer. It's a part of you, though. It is part of me. <laughs> I'm afraid of what would happen to it if it were damaged or broken. I'm afraid of what would happen to me. I'm afraid I might be holding my soul in my hands. I do not know or want this, but it might be of help. Let's uh, tuck it underneath your robes for now. He kind of like he t he he pulls his his like robes closer, and he he pulls his cloak kind of over him to like and conceal most of it, since it's a larger cloak, since it was sized for a regular sized person. He just pulls it, and he kind of does the the clasp up, and then he, he does he like pulls the the rest of it together, and he's just holding it, kind of around himself as he walks. So, yeah, I mean that's good. That it's good that we know that the book's important, right? Like, yeah. Uh... Let's uh let's walk on, yeah. Yeah. I seem eager to change the topic. Then, uh, right, let's uh, rock and roll then. Perfect. Cool. So making your way back to the city and then heading out and flying up. Wait, yeah, you just got cool stuff, didn't you? I'm missing something. Did I get cool stuff? <laughs> you are cool stuff. You, Did you I get more cool stuff? In you. Uh, so, well, uh, what do you want to do to take a look at yourself? I can't. I'm just gonna rotate the axe at me and try to make it not the eyeball looking at me. <laughs> okay, and so um, catch a reflection. So as you as you you're looking at the eyeball and you you're trying to like you as you you kind of like flip the axe in your hand, um, and the, away from the eye and then flipping it back, and then it's still just the the purple eye staring back at you, and you you see you catch just in the reflection of the the, the darkened um, eye and the gem and everything you do see your two glowing spots where your people should be the, the two stars that kind of stay in their place reflected back at you all right i see how it is. You got... he's just grumbling to himself he doesn't really care <laughs> All right, perfect. So you guys um, make your way um, as you, you're kind of following the tunnels. It's it's not that hard um, to, to trace your tracks, as, uh, but as you, you go around, you, you do notice that there are some glowing spores still stuck to a few of you, and and um, you know you're leaving a few footprints behind you as you as you walk. But you know the, most of you are uh, it's it's just they they rub off after a little while, and you, you leave just kind of like a small glowing trail back to the the Myconid, uh, colony. And then uh, you guys kind of start making your way back towards the city. Um, can I get everybody to make a... Um... Well, if we notice a small glowing trail, I'm actually going to try to, like, with my foot, scrub it out. Okay. And uh, you guys notice... I'm going to clean it up. You're going to press the digitate it away. There it is. Power. And uh, so uh, as you go to scrape your feet, you just see uh, Vicera kind of, like, smile. And he starts waving his hands, like, rapidly. And, and then uh, you see this... It's almost like, like a power washing where it's just... Just this almost block where he's just moving it around as it goes up and down and left to right. And then uh, roll a d100. <laughs> uh -oh. uh, we're fucked! <laughs> oh, I want to use magic for everything, though. That's what Damn. makes it fun. 60. Or actually, sorry. Fuck, you have to roll a d20 first. Seven. Nothing happens. And so you, you, it goes out, everything happens as normal, and you clean everything off, and uh, the, you guys are no longer glowing in any way, shape, or form, and most of you are much cleaner than you were even before. This is it's nice. hard for me. Um, yeah, for you, you feel I, like the, it, the small itch of, of like dust under your, and like the, the spores and everything that have been kind of leaking, like kind of pulling into your feathers, and then it's suddenly gone, less itchy, nice and free. And uh, then, uh, now I don't have to preen that gross stuff out. And then as you're, you're looking, as you're welcome. You, you, as you guys are, are kind of walking through after the, the glow now, being released, um, uh, as you look at your, your bow and then you hold up your symbol, you do notice in your symbol, there's this slight sparking. The sparking that you know means somebody is with you. You might, yeah, this, you have this the glance. This day just went from weird and... What this would you going to be... 
I'm going to, I'm going to, hey guys, give me a minute. And I'm going to, are we outside yet? I'm sorry. It's yes, yeah, so you guys, you guys are in the tunnels. Um, You're almost back to the, the city. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to wait until we get outside and I'm going to try and, uh, if you guys don't mind, I, I might take off for a minute when we get outside. Um, I'll, I, you know, it's just a second. Got to talk to somebody, you know. Don't the, you look like a dwarf right now? Yeah. The, Everybody looks like a dwarf. I can't fly. It kind of does. He could still fly. He just I mean, looked I like a dwarf. A few feet. You see his dwarf form just. It's like in Red Dead when it glitches out and yeah, the fucking kind birds of have people I'm gonna, skins. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my hands out, palms front, and kind of do that pose as a. Oh, see, it's fine. <laughs> you I'm have to telling do this you to right be now. careful. Well, he said he was gonna do it once you guys got outside. Yeah, no, I'll be outside. I'm not gonna do it in the I'm city. Telling you to be careful. Yeah, I'll, I'll be a sneaky boy. I'm always very sneaky. Did you see how sneaky I was down there? <laughs> Perfect. And then no, I'm... I was busy being sneaky myself. Oh, so you know. <laughs> and I'm the one telling you to be careful, not that you can't do it. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, so as you guys are making I'm your on way... your side here, man. <laughs> Back to the city. Are you guys um uh, just kind of going into the city, or are you gonna go around? What's what's your plan here? I just wanted to check something real quick. What does the crackling in the symbol mean? Like, what does that mean? Somebody's with this? Uh, it's something for his character that would know. Um, oh, okay. It's, it's for Uzo. It's not for you. As long as I didn't forget something I'm supposed to know. <laughs> 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 uh, you're, you're good, dude. <laughs> Alright, cool. All right, perfect. I'm just trying to take the fastest route perfect. to okay. the mountains. So, uh, looking at the map, you know, it's, the, the fastest route is just going to go back into Kern and out the front gates. Okay. And as that's going on, I kind of trail back with Uza, and I look over at him. So, I saw some of the writing in that book. I saw it too. And I kind of ignore Uza, and I lead over towards Mesnos, and I'm like, I watched an Alexis murder. Louder, dear. You're cutting out. I say, I watched Menelephus murder my father. Yes. But how did he write to you instructions on what to do? I was sent out before your father. Um, your father didn't knew that his position was becoming tenuous. He had many debts uh, which he could not replay and was in danger of losing his entire rank and instead of you following in his or paying for his mistakes he sent me to go find adventurers to come and save you he sent me with much of his gold to hire them and i was too late in my return it is why i owe you the life debt it is why I should have done sent Ronat? more. I didn't send Ronat. I wish I had. I found Ronat later after you were rescued and gave her the money to take care of you. She refused it many times. And one day, I just kept leaving it outside of her tent every night. Until one day, she finally took it. And I thought that would be the end of it. Until Menelephus came back. And once again, my life debt needs to be paid. And he kind of nods and looks at the floor. He pulls up his hood over his, his ears. And it just kind of, just the, the end of his, his snout kind of showing out. His little black nose kind of sniffling at the air. And you, you hear just this quiet, almost inaudible sob. But he keeps walking. Pull yourself together, Mesnos. Jesus. <laughs> yes, my lady. You're doing Edna. something now, and that's more than most can say about me. Oh, my redemption is not far off. One, hopefully, anyway. 
And then, uh, so and as you guys kind of keep walking. Perfect. And as you guys keep walking, you're coming up to the the gates of the city. Um, can I get a marching order? Uh, real quick, I just have a quick question. Sure. Um, Jess, I'm sorry. Did you ask? Did, did you say that to Uza? No, she meant to say Mesnos, but she said Uza. Okay. Okay. Did I say you said yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why I was like, that's, that's why he responded. She just go. Ignore him. <laughs> okay. Whoa, that's rude. I was Jesus. like, damn, taking this grudge to a new level. Vicious savagery. <laughs> okay. All right. He's a little boy asking what's going on. You talked to him first. God, <laughs> I thought we were going to have a moment. Nope. Nope. Nope, that was most of me. Sorry. Oh my god. No, no, that's fine. It's fine. I just then oh, I didn't geez. say shit. <laughs> I am still avoiding Zephyr. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I'm in the back. Uh, I have the war pick back on my hip, but it's hanging possibly upside down with the snake on it. Hopefully. Yes, yeah, so it would be hanging upside down, and so the snake is kind of about like hip level, and you you you've kind of tied it in a in a way like. So he's kind of, you have to walk like a little weird, like a stiff legged on that leg, so as not to brush into the the flames of the snake. But it does seem to work pretty well for now. Well, that's fine because I'm going into the back and tying the fucking wraps around my hands again to make it look like I'm a fucking you know prisoner orc. Perfect. And so you you put the wraps around your your wrists and everything, and and kind of assume the the prisoner position. Uh, who's leading? Yeah. So now I'm just limping. So it makes sense. It's fine. <laughs> And uh, you notice as you pull the um, uh, the the pick and as you attach it to your belt, it disappears into the the illusionary spell of seeming, and the snake seems to be disappeared as well. I'm pretty sure we're okay with that. Well, that's right. handy. And uh, so who's leading? I said, is it um, Vicera, correct? Yeah, he's the yeah. dwarf. All right, so uh, Vicer followed by so uh, who else is anybody else in the front with Vicer or everybody else kind of congealing in the back? I, I'll be up front with Vicer. Perfect. Okay, and uh, I'll be so, I'll be away from Zephyr because that is still even more awkward. <laughs> it gets proven more and more wrong by the minute. <laughs> so then I will hand Zephyr the oh. other end of the rope. Being like, the ruse. I take. I take the rope. Ruse. Perfect. And uh, so you, you take the rope, and you guys are making towards you the way to the city. Can I get a perception check? Rink a dicky, we 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 can do. Uh, we're not <laughs> in the dark the now. What the fuck right? is going on today with these rolls? Okay. <laughs> 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 oh. Perfect. Uh, so you guys uh, don't notice anything as you're, you're kind of making your way towards the, the city. Shit. You're kind of looking around. Downtown. Uh, Fucking but, fast. And so, but as you guys make your way to the uh, the city gates, as you walk through, the guard has cycled through since you were last here. And um, are they dwarves or uh, Durgar? They are Durgar. Ah, of course. And so as you you kind of make your way up. Uh, one, the uh, two at the side, kind of step out in front of of everybody. All right, hold there. What's your business? Paper. Uh, I hand uh, Uza the paperwork to hand to them. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, official business for the uh, uh, official business on behalf of the uh, the uh, uh, the guild. Just just give him the paperwork. I got the paperwork it out. And, and, and right. force it into the, the door. <laughs> Make a deception check with advantage because Vicer intervened. <laughs> 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 Gotta help where you can. Eh. Oh, that's All right. So All right. So, uh, and uh, as uh, he's looking at the paper, he, the door guy looks, looks at you for a second. And like you see, like this. I looked scrolls. at him through my one eye because it's all the other one's all scarred over. Yeah. And then you see this like hate flare up just right behind the eyes of <sighs> oh. All right, fine. Move on him. He tosses. He doesn't even like hand it back. He kind of like like wafts it in your face and drops it to be caught. I'm gonna let it hit the floor and just kind of. I'm gonna like, use. Pick I'm gonna it up. Use mage hand. <laughs> oh no, I'm not. I'm okay, not. okay. <laughs> and then the, the doer guy stepped to the side, and as you guys are, are making you, you, my map disappeared. What? My map disappeared. Can you guys? Can anybody see anything? Yeah, I can see everything. 
Yeah, I'm reloading. Your... Stamp oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> no, like I saw it and it went white. Oh, oh weird. no, I let it, I let it, I let it uh, hit the hit the ground and and just I just don't make a big deal about picking it up. The Gura step to their side, and you guys kind of make your way through. Uh, can I get a, another round of perception checks? <laughs> Probably good. It'll do me. Yes. Fuck y'all. <laughs> I'm uh, yeah, waiting yeah. for roll 20 to reload here. Sure. There uh, it goes. Perfect. Excellent. So as you guys are, are kind of making your way through, um, you notice that every guard, as you guys are walking, is a Durgar. Except for like two or three here and there that are um, just regular... Uh, the your standard like hill or uh, mountain or stone dwarves. Um, everybody, you you like almost all the people you're crossing th through the city, Duogar are guarding every corner. And um, as you're you're kind of making your way through, you're feeling less and less comfortable. As you see, um, a lot of them like there are some that aren't even paying attention. They've just devolved into like sitting and gambling. As they as as you pilot, pass by, they look up and then kind of like sneer at you. It's getting less and less comfortable in this city as you guys go through. Um, are the ones that are still dwarves, are they in the King's Guard armor? The black armor, or is it standard guard armor? Standard guard armor. Um, okay. So they're not in the, the, the black armor of the King's Guard. Um, okay. In fact, you do notice a surprising lack of King's Guard armor. You don't see any. Uh, as of before, you saw it lightly peppered through, especially at events and things like that. Um, so you guys are heading straight out the front gate. Yep. Yep. Perfect. And uh, so as you guys keep... Is, is night falling or what time is it? Uh, no, it's, so you're about five hours and you're seeming. Um, it is about two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, great. Yeah, because you guys got up and kind of went. You, you did some planning no, for no, about an hour and a half. That's what I thought. And... That's why I was like, fuck, what's going on? Is it dark? The Duragar being out during daylight was what threw me off. Oh, there's no daylight well, here. You're under the mountain. Right. Okay. Oh. And the cave boy. <laughs> I just thought they got the daylight boy. from the mirrors. I don't know. I remember the mirrors. That's my. That's a thing that is important to my plans later. So I just. The, the glowy rocks. The, the, the Yep. The, I mean, the mirrors. The mirrors are literally reflecting sunlight in, right? No, the, there are some mirrors that are reflecting sunlight in. Um, okay. But you uh, actually. That's one thing you would notice. Thank you for the reminder. Um, the normal daylight that's reflected in is gone. It is just yeah. the Zeller Akim that are, are lighting the um, the top What's of the it. What's the color on the Zeller Akim right now? Uh, you notice it's been blue most of the time that you've been here, but it fades with a, like a light. It looks like looking up at the ocean. Um, but now the blue is much darker. And make a perception check. Oh, wait, no, oh, hold that's... on. You just did. You just did. Let me take a look. 25. Yep. Okay. And you're just catching the barest hints of a ripple of purple. A deep, dark, royal blue. Hard to see at that, that height, but you definitely know it's there. A deep purple. Every once in a while, deep. you'll see a wave of it. I'm going to... You said a deep purple? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, um, all right uh, everyone, uh, listen up. Uh, so the Zeal Rakim, and I'm whispering that it's amongst the group, but still in the Dwarvish accent. Sure. Yeah, just in case. Well. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, the, uh, uh, a friend of mine told me that the Zeal Rakim up there tends to uh, reflect the altitude of the city. And seeing that it's turning a dark blue, and I don't know if you can notice, but if you look real close, it's getting to be a little purple, and that is not sitting well with me. I mean, that could be good for us overall, let's be real. If people are unhappy, that'll make our lives easier, right? But what if Phobator is having a hand in this? I mean, we'll have to do what we, we can. We can always ask when we get a chance. So, with my 22, do I actually notice the sun thing? You do, yes. Yeah, you notice the, the sun not being reflected inside. You notice there's no na there's no sunlight at all compared to the I other have... days that you've been here. Ugh. Uh, I'll hold that for a minute because I'm still an orc at the moment. I probably Perfect. shouldn't be doing a whole lot. Of time. Oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Then, uh, so you guys make your way, and uh, as you make the, your way to the front of the gates, um, you notice that there's still, as you get close to the the very entrance, all of these guards are 
normal dwarves, not the Duergar. Um, and uh, you even notice in the, the person when you first came into the city, Bodrum Bristlechin. Um, he's, he's kind of sitting at... He's no longer at the beginning entrance, but he's back here near the city talking to some of the guards as you wander up, and he kind of makes his way out. He's like, Lord Era, I haven't seen many of you here before, uh, but of course, uh, well, I actually meet everyone who comes in this city, so uh, can I get some identification? Who are you? Time for i uh, I'm going to press to digitate a card. Um, of, okay. Right? Like. Yep, you can make a, an object, object that fits in the palm of your hand. Okay, uh, an identification card. Perfect. What does it say? Fuck. Um, <laughs> what was the dumb dwarf name I used earlier? <laughs> It's got like a, it's got like Rufus, uh, Goldface, uh, is the name. You're wanted. Rufus Goldface? <laughs> oh, that's, that's, a, no. that's a new name. That's, that's, a, new a, new name. Name. that's a new name. That's a new name. It's a new name. Good, it just, better be. Just just fuck it. Oh, God. No, no, it's, it's a new name. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, Rufus uh, Goldface. Um, Goldface. member, member of the, the Bard College or whatever, um, Okay, so tra you're tra traveling musician, um, and then it has uh, somewhere written on it, um, and party. <laughs> oh, I guess uh, you must have come in while I was uh, asleep. I know a lot of you entertainers come in at the night. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you know, the city actually could use a, a bit of a pick me up. So I'm glad you're here, but I'm sorry to see. Are you leaving us or are you coming back? Oh, we're just going for a day trip out to the mountain, and we're going to come right back all refreshed and invigorated to bring the joy to the city. All right, well, it's a, a beautiful day for it. It's uh, nice and calm out there. Uh, the only thing I would uh, warn you against is uh, there's been some activity in the forest of these kind of darker beings. So uh, I see you have a, a party with you. The Ark there, is he a prisoner or is he muscle? <laughs> Uh, he's a bit of both, to be honest. Uh, he, you know, yeah, got, he just, you know, sometimes, well, honestly, a little afraid in the city. We didn't want to freak anyone out. So we thought we'd walk him in chains here. And then when we get out, he'll, he'll be muscle for us, you know? Well, you know he's the, the attitude. Break, he's the break chains in case of emergency kind of fella. You know, I have some in my employer the same way. All right, well, uh, as long as you have something to keep you a little bit safe, uh, you know, when you come back, though, tell me where you're performing. I'd love to, well... Find something, uh, yeah, for some bit of joy in this city. As a, it's been a rough few days. It's been a rough few oh. months. We'll be happy to provide it. And then I, I like move my fingers real fast to make a little tune with the the um, violin. Perfect. And uh, so, <laughs> and as the the tune leaps from your your fingers, he kind of uh, you see a smile across his face, and he he just nods like, I'll appreciate that. Well, uh. On through you go, thank you. And he kind of like steps to the side. I, I take I take my uh, my my card back. <laughs> Perfect. I can't fucking believe that word. And then we can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, and actually it was he uh, he didn't even suspect a damn thing. Like you guys played that well enough that I I didn't even need to roll or anything. You guys just went. So as you guys you guys make it a rough day. <laughs> he's had a very rough day. <laughs> Um, so you guys kind of make your way uh, across the bridge. Blood scales trying to get Zephyr to. Oh, you get you get her attention. In. She she looks over. <laughs> I'm looking. I, what am I seeing? Oh, you have to look at him physically. <laughs> you are. I'm doing. I'm literally physically doing the motion to you, asshole. Man, this is riveting stuff. What I don't know what so you engaged. want! So, what, what are... Okay, as we leave the city, I just flip her off and we just keep going. <laughs> we could... You guys see, see uh... To... <laughs> you, you yeah, but see... I let go of the rope after we get out. <laughs> and I'm tired. Okay, okay. It wasn't even tied, it was literally just wrapped around like right. an asshole. <laughs> So you guys have made your way outside of the city. Um, and as you go outside, the bright light of the sun hitting your eyes, oh, it hurts really bad. And um, Bloodscale, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. I would have closed my eyes the moment we got outside. What are you talking about? All right, okay. I'm um, being led by a rope. Once so rope as you... Drops, I'm going to say a different name. You, you close it and you're standing there as the rope goes slack and you feel the rope fall off of your hands. All right. Oh, uh, noticing uh, 
he's got his eyes closed. I walk over and doesn't he have goggles or something? Or he does. Uh, he has a, a, a set of goggles if one, one is broken. broken. Uh, I'll just I'll just uh, pop one. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Addy, Addy, hold on, Addy. Uh, Orn. And Orn. as you say, Orn. That's a name. <laughs> Orn. All of a sudden, the you. Uh, and as it is, you you see, he says Orn, and then. That was a silver boy. No, I know. I was. What are you gonna? Are you opening your eyes? Or just... I was gonna. I, last time I did this, there was frost over my face, I'm waiting for that to happen again. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so you you do as <laughs> you say. Smart enough. As you it. say, Orn, and uh, and hold your eyes shut. You do feel the the calming and ice, and case getting around your eyelids, until it forms almost like um. Like a, a, a mask over your, your face, and you feel it, and then <laughs> open your eyes, and the the gla the uh, ice shatters away from your face as your eyes return back to their to as silver. Woo! All right. Neat. And, uh, we good? We, we out? Everything's fine. Yeah. yeah we're good. Perfect. Are we at an eye shot? Are we at a view of the? Uh, yes. Yeah. You've gates? made it. You've made it outside the gates, across the bridge, uh, or I guess you're you're crossing the bridge now Grandma, into the city. Flips up or off again. Are there what? any clouds anywhere nearby? <laughs> you could uh, have used words. As the orc prisoner, that's not supposed to do talking. We never had that rule. Uh, yeah, we did. What did you need? I was trying to wave you over. I leaned in and you didn't do anything. You were nowhere near close enough. Oh. This, is, this is quiet, secretive nonsense. Which I'm still <laughs> going to say farther away from the goddamn city. Perfect. Okay. All right, so um, as you're looking around for the uh, the clouds, um, you do see that there, there's a bunch of light um, clouds in the sky. And um, a little bit off, you do see... Um, looking for clouds, there's no darker clouds, but with a 26, you see... A single lightning strike to the northwest. I'm gonna head that way. See you guys. I'll be back in a bit. Okay. And he's off. Uh, We're going to uh, the wait, um, I, I tap my earpiece thing. Don't forget to check in. You know. Should should only be a minute. How far away are these clouds? The lightning strike. Uh, they're about two miles, three miles away. No Ooh. shit. Sorry. They're like 15 miles away. Oh yeah, not gonna go that far. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go up into the air a couple hundred feet. Like 600 feet. Perfect. Okay. And pl plenty of plenty of drop time to, to catch myself in case I pass out. And uh, just look at the cloud and, and try to, to commune with a Akati. Focus on my, um, my symbol and okay. try to determine the meaning of the spark. Make a general wisdom check. And uh, as you're, you're sitting and, and concentrating, and you just... The sound of the thunder hits you. And as you're, you're sitting, you see another, a little closer. And then you wait. And then you feel the air around you start to tingle with that charged electrical energy all of your feathers start to stand up but not in fear in that exciting something's happening kind of way and uh, instinctively you pull out your your holy symbol and you're, you're looking at it and you feel the warmth of the chest and you see you feel the electricity sparking and as you you pull it out of your chest you realize as you pull it closer to your chest and that warm sensation the sparks leap from it and leap onto, like, into your chest. And as you, you what would you like to do? Uh, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold the symbol closer to my chest and try to deactivate the the lightning resistance from the armor. Perfect. And uh, so as you hold it, you spend some time unattuning yourself to your armor no longer protected by it and as you and as it goes away all of a sudden the electricity is vibrant 
and it's starting to spark in all these different colors, and you feel it pulling towards your chest. I'm going to press the symbol to my chest. I'm going to wedge it underneath the armor, any kind of opening that I can, and just bare feathers. And as you do, uh, you press it to your chest, the bare feathers. You even push it under your feathers so it's bare skin. Lightning leaps, and the rest of you see this. Just four different bolts of lightning collect and hit Uza. And Uza, you feel the symbol burn a little bit into your chest. How far up is he? He is 500 feet near? Six, 600 no. feet. 600 feet. And then, but he doesn't fall. And Uza, you feel the sparking between your, your wings as they beat. You look down, and your symbol is burnt, but it didn't hurt into your chest. You just see where the on your chest where the feathers are, the each feather has been changed white. And you now have a symbol of Akari on your chest. Oh, that is awesome. And nice brand, bro. You gain <laughs> an ability. So Whoa. with this with this you gain um Basically, it's a it's a variation on on healing hands. So as a I'm gonna put it in your character sheet right now. You have Sweet. five of these. And these are um, basically uh, you have five d6, and you can spend up to three of them in a single use. But these are five d6 of healing that you can use, and they replenish every long rest. Five d6 healing hands, up to. And you can use up to three at a time. At a time. Recharge long rest? Long rest. Yep. Right. And uh, you should see them on your uh, in your class resources um, on your character sheet. I put five healing hands. So that is one of your blessings. Fuck. Yes. From Akati. Oh, Perfect. Where is it? And uh, as you... As you're looking at this this new symbol, all of a sudden, you just feel yourself kind of drifting on the on the breeze as you're pushed around by the the air, the excitement and the charge and the tension gone from the air. And once again, you're in a quiet sky. The I'm rest gonna... of you saw oh, Uza this. struck by lightning. <laughs> Four different bolts of lightning, and now he's just drifting in the air. I attempt to go fly over to him to make sure he's okay. <laughs> Perfect. I cast Dimension Door and teleport right up to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, as you're floating, I, I try and grab him <laughs> in this Hello, in this wisdom boy. Hello, <laughs> wisdom boy. Got that zero wisdom. In this in this uh, <laughs> this this kind of peace after your communion. <laughs> With Akadi, all of a sudden, suddenly a screaming <laughs> sorcerer going, "I'll save you!" <laughs> Doesn't he just start plummeting right back down? Yeah, no, he he pops up and then he. Do you, I assume you try to grab onto him. Yeah. So all of a sudden, uh, he, you just hear, "I'll save you!" and he grabs you, and then uh, now you're on the ground. Oh no, your feather fall? Is that what you cast? Oh, uh, can Dim Dimension Door do both ways, or can I just... Oh, no, I thought you more? were just... I thought you were using a Dimension Door to... Get, okay, so he grabs onto you. If I can use Dimension Door to just pull him to the ground, I definitely will, but I didn't... I didn't I oh, didn't yeah, you, you can... You would basically... Dimension Door, you can take somebody your same size or smaller, so you could pop up there, grab him, and then pop him back to the ground. Again. He does have to, cast, have to cast... it. Yes, yeah, yeah so you do I'll, have to cast it again. Feather Fall's like a lower-level spell, so Perfect. I'll use that instead. So, I'll save you! And then all of a sudden, uh, you see him <laughs> slowly drift kind of falling slowly away from you. <laughs> you uh, grab are him, you? right? No, no, I, I'm right next to him. I definitely grab him. Oh, yeah, you gra he grabs you, and then you slowly are just staring oh, Vicer in the face. Don't worry. We're gonna be okay! Look at shields! He's like a pound, right? <laughs> yeah, you're both... No, he cast it on both of you, so you're both just... Oh. Slowly, kind of drifting down to the ground. As you as you look down, you see. Um, oh no! I <laughs> see so for the both of us. No, it's just choose up to five me. creatures within range. Oh great! Oh never mind. I will then. All right, perfect. <laughs> and so you you like you stop flapping because you're so flabbergasted, shit. and you notice you stop flapping, but you're still just gently 
falling to the ground. And you see um, Zephyr, and as you look down, you see Zephyr flapping her wings, desperately trying to get to you. But it just looks like her dwarf form floating forward towards you. T posing to assert dominance. You just look like dwarves. <laughs> yes, you've looked like dwarves this entire time. Look at a dwarf just standing on the ground, looking up like, uh -uh. Uh, I got him! He's a, are you okay? <laughs> this is amazing! And I'm just gonna take off with him towards Zephyr in just this <laughs> celebratory <laughs> zooming as fast as I possibly can towards Zephyr, towards the ground, just full on dive bomb. <laughs> this is amazing! <laughs> Make a general I dexterity I check. <laughs> I scream a lot. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, can I? I'll make a dex check to see if I hold. Just, no, you'll have to make a to strength okay. check to make sure you hold on. <laughs> Good. That's what my strength is, guys. <laughs> Mine is less minus than zero. One. <laughs> All right. Uh, just means you guys will land, and I'll keep and as you, like an asshole. As you, <laughs> you jet away, Zephyr, uh, Viser tries to grab onto you, but you're just you're gone. You're so excited, and then you, uh, Viser, you're just left slowly drifting to the. <laughs> In the wind, kind gonna, of floating downwards. I'm gonna, I'm gonna realize that he's that he's off of me, and I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna grab him by the cloak and just continue to zoom him around. Yakari, be praised, motherfuckers! And as you, so Zephyr, as you're flying up, you see one of the dwarvish forms plummet towards you, then turn around as the other's gently wafting, and grab the other dwarf by his, his cloak, and then start pulling him, so he's look faced upwards, being pulled by his cloak, and just being drifting. So it looks like he's pulling him through, like, kind of like water, <laughs> but he's just slowly just pulling him down. And uh, they make it to you as you're flying up to them. <laughs> oh. As Zephyr's clearly flabbergasted and speechless, I'm gonna do laps around her. He, oh, <laughs> Lord of mercy, oh. He starts, he starts doing <laughs> laps around you, Zephyr. Is still pulling, uh, poor Viser by his cloak around you, <laughs> screaming this most of the time. Not gone so. to plan. <laughs> uh, how fast are you going around her? As fast and as tight in the corners as I can possibly be while actually still holding on to uh, Vice Air. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> Someone's gonna hurl. But it's not You're fine. Hurl. You're not even... <laughs> you start... You stop screaming and you're starting to enjoy this. This is awesome. <laughs> hey, once you get used to it, it's not too bad. <laughs> That's good. I'm, I'm practicing for Gnome later. <laughs> Uh, she's muted if she's trying to talk to us. Huh? You were hit by lightning four times. Yeah, but it was my god talking to me. Look, and I just try to open my armor as best I can to show off the brand. And, and uh, I look at him. Oh, oh. And uh, on wow. his on his chest, you see uh, what looks to be um, this. It's like this. Uh, square, like almost like a, a, a banner waving in the wind with a cloud uh, in the middle of it. And it's, uh, it's his feathers have been changed to color, so you're seeing like a, like where his feathers are normally brown, it's like a frost brand, so that this is a white symbol on top of his brown feathers. Oh, wow. I've never been that close to my Wow. Uh, but regardless, we're still dwarves in the air, and we should probably get to the ground and head to the mountains quickly before anybody sees us. Yeah. I had to um, say it. She's probably right. <laughs> forgot about that. Sorry, sorry. Wasn't expecting That's very exciting, coolness. though. But I'm you're, very uh, happy for you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, and I start flying back down to the ground. Perfect. And as you, you bring everybody back down to the ground, you all kind of um, start collecting back up. You land near uh, your friends who are just kind of sitting there looking at you. Uh, uh, let's move on. Yeah. Real quick, what does my um, the uh, the actual necklace, this uh, symbol of Akadi, uh, mm -hmm. is that still intact? Is did that burn up or? It seems undamaged. Okay, so it's still my phone. Okay, fine, cool. Put it back around my neck and button up and try to reattune to the armor. Perfect. And you do as you're walking through, you know. Easy enough. Cool. 
A little more spring in my step. A little more, uh, a little more confident in what we're doing here. I got a little lost there. Found my way. My my God, helping me out. No big deal. Pretty it's cool. We just met. God. My unmet mission from God. Pretty, um, sorry, I'm talking too much. I'm just really excited. You should be excited. That's something to celebrate. But let's move on. Yeah, yeah. silence is golden. Get start. That's great. <laughs> 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 the sea here, just a bunch of flying and screaming dwarves. No big deal. Right, so <laughs> oh, hold on one second. I gotta, I gotta reload D tw uh, roll twenty. But holy crap, you guys, amazing! <laughs> oh, that was such a waste of spells. No, you played that zero whiz just perfectly, boy. I mean, hey, you gotta, you gotta play the. The, the hand that you dealt yourself and I'm ready to play at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure there won't be any negative consequences. No, no. none. No, no, certainly not. No, I'd never do that. Spectacle of madness. Just near... I mean, I don't even know how far outside of the city we are. Not far enough, I'd say. <laughs> nope. Um... Hey Ty, I'm not seeing that, but we can work on it after the game. Oh, it's um, it's actually on the your main page. Well, All my bio and info. It. No, no, no. Like if you look at your player character sheet, let me pull it up here. Who's your paladin? Scroll I have to close the so, character sheet, reopen it. Yeah, I did that just to be sure. Um, so you see where it says personality Second traits? Game. Yes. So go down from there, and you'll see. Um, after all those big boxes, you'll see healing hands five. Oh. Yeah. Neat. That's where you keep track of it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Beautiful. All right. And so, as the the rest of you are kind of making your way through the uh, the the forest and everything, I, can I get a perception check um, so you guys can keep an eye out and look yes. up? Perception. God damn, dude. <laughs> I made the save to not throw up. That's all I care about. <laughs> Got that twenty three, yo. Perfect. And uh, as you guys are, are kind of um, looking around, um, you um, actually, Zephyr, did you just, you described what they're looking for? Never mind. I'll, I'll just, of course you did. Don't be silly. Um, so as yep. you guys are, are kind of uh, looking around, you all of a sudden, wait, what was that? Uza, you heard like something like a, sounded like a child playing. Playing? I'm gonna tell the group, hey, hey, guys, um, I think there's some kids playing up ahead. What? I was be careful. careful. <laughs> I mean, I don't really have a lot of experience. Do kids just often play in the woods? Is that no, like a that's... normal thing? Oh, no, that's the opposite of the normal thing. Okay. Still working on my baseline for normal. Where you're from. <laughs> but yeah, generally not normal. But, guys, do we Let's... know what mountain we're going to? Yes, this one. And I point. <laughs> can, can we just do the flying idea and get this done? All right, let's do it. So now, than, now we can fly? How long uh, does Feather fall last? <laughs> uh, quite a bit, actually. Let me take a look here. Feather fall last. A uh, one minute. minute. Never mind, you're good. Uh, <laughs> The thing is, it, it lasts your whole way to the ground, so you can fall for gotcha, much longer gotcha. than a minute. All right. So yeah, that is that is done. Um, I believe I can help with this. And then um, you see it, <coughs> Mesnos. Uh, he 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 like pulls his cloak back a little bit and waves his hand in the air, and then pulls his hand up, and everybody you feel yourself float just a little bit into the air as he casts fly on everyone. Score. Right. Try to do this fast enough we can actually make it back into the city looking like we do. Yeah. When That's you know, the goal. You're you're a little over half of your time done. Perfect. Okay, well let's go. Perfect. Right, you guys fly. fly. You fly away and um so as you guys take into the air, um you guys headed towards near the top of the mountain? Yeah. Perfect. And uh, so as you're, you're looking around, you you do start to... Can I get another perception check? From everybody? Yep. Yeah, I'll I'm good at these. Bam. Oh, right. Jesus. All right, what so... Talking about. And as you guys are, are kind of <laughs> flying... <laughs> as, as you're flying and looking down, um, 
you all you all start seeing like little different patches as as you're going through. And uh, Zephyr, you see one uh, kind of over off t uh, to the the west a little bit. Bloodscale, you look in, you see one a large one up to the north, and you you kind of fly that way. Um, or, or sorry, you, this is where you see everything. I, I don't. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, and then um, Vicer, you see one just kind of straight ahead. That's a nice, decent. It's it's like kind of a little more barren than the others, but it's it's still a good patch. And Uza to the south, you see just like an almost like a, it's almost been cultivated. Um, this huge land of uh, there's a bunch of bard spice being grown. Nice. Oh shit. <laughs> I uh, I. Do Start I know what pulling, that is? Pull it mushroom yes, yeah. Hand. The bite spice. Yeah, you've been... described all the stuff we needed. Perfect. Yeah, so the, it's been described to you, and um, uh, so it's, you guys are still up in the air. You guys are about two hundred feet up, and as you guys are looking down, seeing all this. I'm pointing at the large patch. I follow uh, blood scale and go to that spot. I fly down to the spot that I saw and start grabbing what what I saw. Perfect. Oh, hey, Ty, real quick, for my healing hands, is that um, a 1d6 plus my spellcasting modifier, or yes. is that just a 1d6? 1d6 plus your spellcasting. Sweet. Which is wisdom, so I think it's plus one for you. Let me take two. 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 two ta that's right. All right. Perfect. So, uh. <laughs> two sorry. time. It's your boy, Skinny P. <laughs> it's your boy, Penny Skeenis. <laughs> there you go. Yep, exactly. Cool. Perfect. All right. So, um, and you guys kind of, uh, so two headed north, one headed kind of uh, mid. So it's like mid mountain. Two of you kind of up near the top, and then Uza, where are you flying? Uh, where's Zephyr at? Zephyr's going north with Bloodscale. I am going to go with Zephyr. Perfect. And uh, so as you guys kind of make your way up towards the the top, um, Wait, I'm the, I'm alone. I'm not going to be alone. I'm flying back with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <Good>. So, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give Bloodkill the look of like that that kind of like head nod like go go with my Sarah. And, you know, it's just, no 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 I fly fly I just say no 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 like I found, well, I found this big thing. No. Okay. Sorry. So uh, you guys kind of make your way down and this is a fairly big patch. Um, it looks like it's it grows pretty naturally and pretty readily here. Uh, there's you see it's about. It's like a, like a 10 foot kind of like big circle of it that's just kind of growing out from like a, a single patch. 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 All right. Uh, then I'm going to I'm going to mage hand. Grab remember my Charlemagne. I remember my Charlemagne. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking tie. <laughs> what the hell? Sorry. So is that, is that Last Crusade? Is that... Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm sorry, bird. so time. So I'm mage hand picking everything that is recognized from the description. In <laughs> perfect, and there's a ton of it, and pretty soon you're you find your your mage hand full with about two pounds of bard spice. I uh, I walk it over to uh, uh, Zephyr. No, I'm How just holding you? the bag of holding open for bard spice. Oh, I right, I'll just dump it in there, perfect. and then I grab another pound or so and dump it in there again. <laughs> Yeah, we're, I, we're still like the mob boss as like as possible. Fucking, <laughs> patch here, man. Um, I'm gonna. Is is this? You said it was cultivated. Like this is planted. No, this patch uh. is is just seems to be. Um, uh, it's hard to tell if this one's cultivated or not, but it, it seems to be uh, more in like a big circle, like a big patch of it, rather than like a cultivated rose, like the one you saw to the south. Okay. Well, either way, I'm gonna keep my eye open for people. Protecting their marijuanas. Bart's ah, not my marijuana patch. Oh god, my marijuana <laughs> patch. Yeah. Oh, go back. <laughs> Sorry, what's this? Uh, perception check. What are you looking for? For someone trying to come and protect their marijuana oh, patch. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, you see this farmer in overalls. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll just kill him with the flick of the. He's gonna get his so. gun. Yeah, go. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go. Let's go to the next thing, right? I All saw right. some stuff over there. Um, okay. I point to the thing. The well, this direction. Looks really big. I... Why don't we just take a punch here? And then we're good. Um, Zephyr, you do There's know that you have. Stuff, right? mm, uh, they're all the same um, plant. You just saw it in, in oh. different places. Um, you would know okay. that this is this is more than enough that uh, than was requested. Yeah, this but it's is Bart. more. Yeah, yeah it's Bart's place, right? 
<laughs> yeah, we're gonna keep collecting. Perfect. Where are you guys headed to next? Channel idea. Uh, the uh, one, the one that I saw wasn't cultivated, right? No, yours was kind of a smaller, patchier patch. Uh, I was gonna take you? half of this patch. What are you talking about? <laughs> So the Don Forge Company became drug lords. Became? What? What did I? Well, the here? more I have for that, the more of the potion I can make later. So, uh, let's go to the uh, next big. Patch is, that is so that there? I there is no. There's no sign that anyone has been in this area recently or anything like that. Uh, well, he looking around. You didn't see anybody coming out to like check on anything or anything like that where you were at the northern patch. Right, but there were, been, there's not like a bunch of footprints one. or anything around us or something that would indicate that. Um, you do see, um, looking at, well, um, make an investigation check for like footprints and stuff. So, um, Zephyr, as you're looking down at the ground, uh, all of a sudden you, you fuck. <laughs> so both of you, as you're, you're kind of looking around together, you do so, like you notice a bunch of like deer tracks and things like that. And you, as you look out, you guys are kind of looking around. You see this one deer kind of like just staring off, and you kind of like laugh a little bit, and, like because it's. Just... <laughs> and then as you laugh, it like looks over, and then it gets like get up, and it like bumps into a tree, and then just like heavily like whoops back down, and then like kind of curls up and goes to sleep. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's go to the next biggest plot, and then we'll grab. Well, what how much there? is left on this plot? There's, 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 still, there's like a significant. It's like, like a fifteen. We have foot three patch. pounds already. Like we the two Just pounds. How and much then is left? We are, plot? Uh, we are answer. getting dangerously close to trafficking <laughs> levels. Okay. Give uh, me an answer, damn it! Uh, so you, you you get an idea that if you were to cultivate the whole thing, you'd have about twelve pounds of bard spice. All right, let's just cultivate that. Taking the useful then. bits of, no, of this one. Let's let's get a total of six pounds, and then half the patch is still here. That way, it could regrow, and everything's fine. Perfect. I six. can just cast regrow more later. <laughs> later? I'm talking about now. If we I mean, never I can cast it after we're done. Look, if we just never come back, let's get half. Then we can just just get half. All right, all right. So we'll grab half. Perfect. So you so write down six pounds total of bard spice. Hey, I got six pounds of bard spice. Bitch, I put most of that in the fucking bag of holding. You shut I up. I need it for the herbal. <laughs> and you can grab it, it from me. My hands did a lot of work. <laughs> Magic hands. <laughs> Magic hands. <laughs> and she doesn't need all of it. We're going to at least have a pound of bard spice for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> at least a pound. So, bard spice six party. pounds of bard spice. I already wrote it party in the Party like a bard spice party because a bard spice party is like real slow and chill. Right. It's like How much more time do we have looking like this? Uh, you guys spent about an, another half an hour, 45 minutes to fly up here and find this because it was not hard to find, surprisingly. All right. Well, let's run on back and uh, Hold go on. back. Before we go, because we still have time, I had an idea. What's that? That, that guard. The one at the front gate that we kind of like. Uh huh. He doesn't like any of this shit. Ready? Yeah, and he's had several bad days. Yeah. We uh -huh. have a possible ally who can get us far more allies now. Absolutely. You're saying we should give him some barn space. <laughs> I'm saying that we should get fucking Rash to have somebody go talk to him about possibly joining a revolution getting the normal guards on the side because if we could do that suddenly we have a small army yeah which that is better than good. what we have now which is a very small army <laughs> well yeah let's let's get moving on it then let's okay cool that. i just didn't want to say that near the town because that seemed like a terrible fucking idea all right i don't know i was i was gonna try and talk to him on our way back it didn't seem it seemed awkward to do it in my door form well, it's yeah. even more awkward to do it in front of Dwarger, so uh, let's... It's even more awkward to do it as yourself, <laughs> figuring that we're wanted. Let's let Rash here. Wanted! Yeah, Dwarger at the gate, right? Not That's at the gate. Just cool. It doesn't matter, cool. the normal guards are looking for us, too. Yeah, but if the normal guards are cool... They're not cool they're yet. They're not cool yet. We have yet. to make them cool. Some people are not born cool. <laughs> Let's just go back and Offer some regroup. Of the you see if they're cool. We, we can have like Rash do that, but let's have Rash do all this. Literally yes. his job in this. 
All right, let's You're go, cool? guys, because cool. I want to be Spice. back at Homadis before this disguise <laughs> drops. All right, let's go. <laughs> you cool? You Spice? Yeah. You cool, bro? Spice? Do we have, do we have to cast Fly yeah. again? Fusaka? Let's go. Fusaka. Fusaka? Right, so you fly. Let me see how it lasts that long. Do we need to re-up Fly to get down? <laughs> get up to get up Ten to get minutes? Down. Yeah. You'd have to recast it. And um, Let me recast Fly as I just hover away. Very funny. And uh, as you as you you start to laugh and hover away, uh, Mesnos reaches out and pulls one of your feathers off, and then uses it to cast fly as it's disintegrated. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what? Thank you, Uza. So, <laughs> so fly off. Sorry, I needed a feather. <laughs> and uh, so you guys are headed back You're to the city. Welcome. Yep. Perfect. All right. So you guys I'll use the ring of gestures to just put a hand in front of Mesnos's face the entire time that he's flying. And as he's flying, you see he, like, barely notices it. His hood Flip is covering shot. most of his face, and he's just good to go. Okay. Right, perfect. So you guys make your way back in, and, um, so. Uh, so you, your overall excursion took about an hour and a half. So you guys have about uh, two and a half hours remaining in seeming. Okay. I think we need to hurry. Yeah, okay. We're going to go so. back to the base. Perfect. So you guys make your way back in, and and as you you do you guys want to stop and talk to anybody along the way, or? Well, I'm gonna nab the bard spice, and then I'm gonna go head over to Helmata's. Perfect. How much do you need? All but one pound. How are you gonna carry five pounds through the city easily? In a pack. She said she only needed one pound, right? Or did you say all but one pound? She's taking all but one pound. I thought we'd Lord. use some of this as a bargaining chip. Whatever. Here's, here's five. Here's Just go pound. away. And uh, actually, Helmada, Helmada only needed about two pounds. Like, uh, and she's well, going to. I forgot to... how much she needed, okay. so that's why I wanted to bring. Perfect. All right, so okay. also she's gonna grease the wheels a little bit. I know how this works. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So. Good. Good. And then I invite anybody that wants to come with to come with, but I say I'm gonna, it's fairly I'll, boring. I'll go with her. Perfect. And then, uh, so Viser um, and um, Bloodscale, you guys are headed back? Yeah, I am. Perfect. And uh, so, as you guys kind of make your way back in, uh, you guys make your way back in, and, uh, you know, uh, Badrin kind of waves at you guys as you guys go through, just stepping out of the way. Um, still okay. closer to the city um, as you guys kind of make your way through. Um, so, uh, before we split up, uh, yeah, as we far, walk through the door, I'm going to play, uh, an, a jaunty tune on my, uh, finger rings because this dude's still having it. And as you do, you just, hear, uh, you just hear, you just hear, yeah, wait, oh, and he kind of runs after, you. uh, you didn't tell me where you're playing tonight. Uh, well, 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 actually we're in the middle of a negotiation at the moment. It's kind of a little up in the air, but it should be as soon as we know for sure, I will absolutely let you know. I promise you that. Oh, okay. All right. Well, a lot up in the air right now. That's uh that's bad. Okay. And he kind of like walks back. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you guys can make your way through the city again, Durgar everywhere. Uh, but luckily, before before we split up, I'm grabbing my stone and whispering into it. Barbara, Barbara. Can we all hear that now? Yep. Go, Everybody yeah. hears it. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I'm not Blood trying home. to be sneaky. What's Go the ahead. code? The tile code. Oh. Uh, do you want the tile code or do you want the password for the end, other entrance? Because I think that's closer. That one. Well, the tile code is. Top left, bottom left, bottom right, top right, and then just do it again. And then the passcode is Rashilda unblocks the way. Okay, that one will probably be easier. Okay. That's the one we, we used when we were leaving the last cart. Okay, let's go that way. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, so you guys... Um... I headed towards the the last cart, and you two are headed towards the herbology shop. So, um, is Mesnos going with me or with them? Mesnos is always with you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I Mesnos. have the snake. Yep, snakes with you. And uh, I have. Cat butt! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. 
So I was as... hoping to, to to talk with Zephyr on the on the way there. I don't know. Perfect. If, uh, the team has, we'll uh... we'll get you. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Uh, we'll we'll get you guys okay. in just one second. So um, okay, no worries. Viser and and uh, Bloodscales, you kind of make your way back. Uh, the chains or the 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 rope tied around um, your hands. Bloodscales, you're yep. being guided through the streets by Viser. Um, you kind of make your way past. You, you, you know this this route fairly familiarly to you by now. Uh, you know where the last card is. It's a place you'd called home for the past few days. And uh, as you're you're walking through the the town, you see that the lights in the last cart are dark. Um, the door has been broken in, and uh, you hear just this <laughs> from inside. As you you there's just general rabble rousing, and you see um, you just hear things inside kind of being going through and, and shuffled and broken. Maybe we should go the other way. I think you're right. Unfortunately. Okay, and then uh, can yeah. I get you guys to make uh, perception checks? Perfect. And uh, so as you you're start making your way through the uh, the other way, because of your, your mask and your dark vision, um, you see inside of it that there are uh, Duergar, who are just pouring themselves drinks, eating the food, breaking tables, going to town on the place. I can't wait to kick the shit out of those guys. <laughs> I agree, but now is not the time. No, I'm not arguing that. I'm just looking forward to it, is all. Also, I hope the other guys go the other way and not. Maybe we should go to the herbology place just to tell them at this point. That seems like a maybe. Yeah, let's just do that. Perfect. And so you guys <laughs> start making your way through the streets. Um, and then uh, Uza, you find yourself walking with uh, Zephyr and Mesnos uh, down the streets, uh, fully disguised in your seeming form. All right, so I didn't really want to... I, I, I guess... To the two of you, I'm sorry. I, I screwed up. I, I thought I was doing the right thing. And I let to uh, an assumption. And then I treated you terribly for actually thinking it through. And... And I'm sorry. It's it wasn't It wasn't right of me to treat you that way. I can't blame you. You care about the tinkerer, and I got in the way of that. But, as I said, there are people who mean more. There are things that take priority, and sometimes it's not what you're hoping, but it's the best you can make out of a situation. I'm glad we didn't kill that guard because he was working for Rash, but we didn't know that at the time. Well, that's the thing, too. It's, um, I went back to the guild and, um, well, I looked at uh, the, the remains, uh, what, what had happened there, because uh, I left after throwing the, the test of coughing and sneezing, and there was a much larger fight there and I think at least one maybe two bodies were dragged out and I'm worried that I got guards that were working for the best of the city killed you can't help what you don't know that's why it's important to know as much as you can before you but, act <laughs> that's the thing it's supposed to, right, right and wrong it's supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be black and white and black and white and black and white. It's just... Oh, it's a whole mess of gray, and sometimes the gray is so thick you can't see the nose in front of you. Black and white and black. <laughs> There's a balance to be struck between good and evil, and there is a balance to everything. So... That is the core of my belief. Even to those that I despise and would sooner see 
leave this world. They are not all black. Guess I just... I've got a lot to learn still, and... I mean, hell, you... I trusted you in... in the Underdark with those weird mushrooms, and... I'll be honest, I was about to shoot that big floaty ball thing that looked like a beholder. And I'm glad I didn't. And I almost shot the big towering mushroom. But I'm glad I didn't, and I didn't, and I almost didn't let him jump into my head, but... I don't know. I thought, I thought I knew... Right from wrong. Everyone is always learning. Well, I can't say to be an authority either. That's... We learn as we go. I know I have lots of learning left to do as well. And then, uh, so you guys make your way as you, you've been chatting. You find the mate and pull up to the um, Helmada's um, herbology shop. The the lights are on, and um, and as you kind of make your way in, there's a small you know jingle of the doors as you walk through, and you see Helmada um, for once. She is furiously working on, on uh, behind the counter. She's she's moving like a million miles a, a, a minute as she's just kind of making her way. Uh, and she kind of looks up sort of some of these boiling kind of uh, kettles and stuff. And she's like, oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, you finally made it back, have you? I did. And well, I have well, quite well, a few components. Excellent. Excellent. Well, bring, bring them here. Bring them here, my girl. So I show her oh, the I'm like oh, well, part is... spice. Well, dear, you can. Uh, I mean, I will keep some of this extra if you like, but this is uh, more than I'll need. But you know, not more than I'll ever need. <laughs> she kind of looks at you and smiles. <laughs> I give her three pounds. Mm, that's more than enough. Thank you, dear. It's very generous. <laughs> and that gives us two pounds left. Uh, three. three pounds, because yeah, it's total six. No, I left one pound in the bag she means with... the people at the herbal oh okay shop. perfect gotcha all right so yeah that, the so she takes three and she see um she immediately starts to to take it oh, i and... thought you meant you gave her specifically for her own use three <laughs> so i was like oh damn um and uh, um and i also open up my thing and show her the pacifying spores the random oh. mushrooms and spores that i found and oh, okay. also the sovereign oh. spores <sighs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. These, these last spots, these are so special. Where did you get these? I talked to a sovereign spore uh, leader among uh, the spores, and he gifted it to me. This is actually something quite unique, and I, I don't believe I've had the chance to work with it yet. I'm going to have to study this slightly, uh, but this should do the job for what we're thinking. Uh, and she's, you see, as she's talking... So I dive in with her. So. Perfect. And you guys are going in together, and so she's um, taking the uh, the bard spice and packing it really tightly into this glass container with a press. And then um, she, she puts it over in uh, the, the press itself inside of uh, a boiling water with just a, a single tube coming out, and she starts to press down on it. And uh, you see the heat as she presses starts to release some of the oils from the leaves as she's just pressing all of this oil out of it. Um, and it starts collecting and she presses it down and then she, she looks around for a second then she grabs like this um, she puts uh, she grabs this this device where it, it like it's like these two clamps but it's connected together and she puts it over and she starts clamping it down and then turning it and then she look, she uh, as she, she puts that to the side she, she looks over at you um uh, Uza, and she's like, uh, turn these screws when that liquid stops. Uh, you are with me. And she um, pulls you with her Zephyr. And uh, she starts pulling out some of the, the spores. And then you see, um, she's looking at the ones oh. that you scooped up. Go ahead, sorry. Really quick. Um, didn't I ask her if there was Enoch anywhere around? And she said she didn't know, or did she know? No, no. She has Enoch growing in her store. Um, she said you could gotcha. grow more if, uh, and she gave you a pod to grow more eventually. Okay. Perfect. I then, forgot to write that down. Oh, that's okay. Uh, and then so as she's um, kind of going through, um, like, bits by bits, she's just grabbing things off of shelves and and show, kind of, like, briefly showing and explaining to you. It's like, you know, she's 
you know, this is like um, a bit of a uh, like an it's a distilled uh, ooze from uh, from like a, a, a gelatinous cube um, that that's it's very useful for um, you know it's as an acidic base for for certain things and she as she she takes that she she kind of um, drops some of the um, the mushroom stuff inside of it and then uh, pops it off and then she looks up and she's like oh uh, were you able to get the root of the Morpheus flower that's no worry it's no worry and then she goes over and she she um, um, she drops that into the, the, the gelatinous cube extract and it starts to dissolve and the entire thing starts to change into this uh, this vibrant glowing pink with like a yellow core. And then she's like, I, uh, she starts like tapping her head again as she's, she's thinking and looking around. She's like, uh, could you grab me some Enoch, dear? And she kind of points over to the, yes, the vine that's growing. and I growing. go grab some Enoch very gently so that I don't ruin the plant itself. Perfect. And she's like, well, we can use this along with the the the, the myconid spores for that uh, that awful one the dead man's revenge the only thing we need something to guide it to a dark place and she sees she's looking around at the things in her in her, her inventory she's like uh, this should do it and then she pulls out this this vial and it's a very small vial of black ichor and she's like uh, the undead this should bring back the memories of those gone and she adds two drops to this 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 uh, potion that everything's dissolving it's not over heat at all it's all just dissolving into this and she starts to like swirl it around and then she's she looks up and she's like and now the enoch my dear can you wow uh, and she she slides a, a mortal and pe mortar and pestle over to you as she's swirling this around she's like would you mind and she's like it's this big kind of like circular vial with like a tube that comes up the top and she's like rotating it around like this just so it's mixing together and kind of loosening it she has to like shake it to loosen up some of the the gelatinous parts and then yeah. uh go and make an herbology check as uh, so we you know, as you're helping her go through her tasks yeah, because I've been working with her do I get a bonus? <laughs> uh, yeah I'll give you advantage because you're working in a familiar space with a master Okay, so nature check, you mean, though? Um, you, did you... Hold on, let me see. You are... Are you... Oh, yes, nature check, yeah, because you're not proficient with it quite yet. Is there probably a skill you can get? Yes. Yeah, okay, perfect. And as you're going through the motions, it's like... It's like living through a memory that you've... Uh, you're getting almost deja vu with how quickly... You and Hamada are like almost... I've been to this space before. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Deja vu. Um, so you, uh, you, you're almost like in this this small dance with with Helmada. She's going through and explaining little bits of things. Um, she's, you know, she's like, well, when you have the, the, the ooze, it'll it'll tear everything apart more efficiently than fire. But you have to make sure you distill it first. And she's telling you basically, you know, how if it's distilled, you can use it as a, a reactive agent. If you don't distill it properly, it'll just eat all of your ingredients, so you have to be very careful with it. Um, you know, she goes over a few different things, and, and then you guys start working on the, um, what was it? The Mauling Madness. And uh, for this one, she's like, I could have used some more Morpheus. Uh, oh no, this is this is one we can use some of that. Uh, and she pulls out the the, um, the extract that she did for um, when she milked Faf. And then she's um, she's like, the, the, the real trick is going to be the tactile hallucinations. And I believe that um, this we can use the, uh, the these spores I haven't seen before. But these seem to be more concentrated and powerful as far as a hallucinogenic goes. And then so she she like takes like a small she you, you see what she she if she opens it. She just taps one like her pinky finger into it and then goes across the top of her gums to like kind of feel it and then. And her eyes go wide, and you see her pupils, <laughs> you, you watch her pupils go, <laughs> and then slowly just come back as she just takes a second and blinks it up. Ah, well, it is quite a lot more powerful than I was expecting, but that is absolutely fantastic. And she goes uh, and starts putting it uh, together um, with the Euphoria Breath uh, extract. And then as she, she's kind of thinking, she, for a second, she turns to you and she's like, what do you think, uh, fire or fire? frost to bring this together and uh with your 21 you instantly just say frost um you're like frost it'll it'll break down the the cellular walls of both of them and and so that way they'll they'll mix together without de destroying the spores inside like, ah good good good, good. Mm, i like that thought and uh, so she then um she takes it over to this um the the top of like the counter opens up and she flips it open and she puts down uh 
the the, the different ingredients into a single thing, and then she uh, reaches behind herself. She grabs a potion. She pops the lid, and she pours like this um, this freezing fog out out of it, and then pops it to get back together. And then um, she she draws you over, and she's like, "Okay, now." Um, once a, and she's she's showing you how she's carefully she places like a um, um, a cloth over the top of it and mashes down until the, each of them shatters apart. Then pulls the cloth back and then scoops it uh, all up into like this uh, uh, a bowl. And she she hands it to you. She's like, okay, uh, mix these while I freeze so until it's a fine powder. And she she grabs the uh, um, the vial once again and starts pouring it as you start to grind it all together until it's this nice powder and then she holds it up and she's looking at it she's like what do you think what should we suspend this in go make another nature check with advantage all right 17 still pretty good uh so as you, you're you're looking at it and you're thinking you know you've been, you've heard about extracts of different creatures and things like that and then all of a sudden you, you're like wait you know um that might be too organic for this this might actually just be fine with some purified water and then you're thinking about it, oh a water elemental if there was an extract from that that would be perfect because some of the animation could keep the bits swirling about so they're more likely to infect the um the host and so she ah that's, I do have some of that and she reaches over and you see she brings this it looks like just a, a regular kind of like canteen but you notice that it has runes over the top as she starts um, pouring it into the the mixture you almost hear a and in primordial you just hear just the the faintest of goodbye as it, it mixes together and she pile vials it back up and puts a stopper Ooh. in it and then uh, so. Uh, the last one is the fire scritch, and she's thinking, and she's like, "Well, we could use the the regular uh, of spores for this." And then I think, and she's kind of looking around. I'm overthinking this. Just some peppers, and she goes over, and you, you see this. She has a um, like these plants growing everywhere in her shop, and she goes over to one where you see these shriveled up, like almost. And as you get closer, you can almost feel heat radiating off of these peppers as she brings it back over and she starts to like file it down. And then she's like, oh, try one of this. And she like holds up a seed to you and says, like, you should try that. It's uh, delicious in the right form. And then I uh, give it a go. Or make a constitution saving throw. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Getting high on her own stash again. <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> I'm dying. It burns. It is so, so hot. It feels like somebody's just holding like a lighter to your face. And she kind of chuckles. And she's like, oh, 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 God. And she chuckles and she reaches back and grabs the um, the same potion she used to, to freeze the things. And she uh, holds, holds still, holds still. And she like blasts your face across your lips and with it. And then corks it and puts it back. And now just your tongue is burning. But it's a pleasant kind of tingling burn that, that is uh, is nice. And the, the, the fire on your, your face doesn't feel nearly as bad as she's kind of... Uh, chopping this up with a, a knife, and then she kind of slides it together. Um, with uh, and then she just takes the 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 vial with the other um, um, spores that you brought, and she kind of like stirs it together. And then um, she's like, "All right, these will." And uh, after a while, you notice that it's been um, quietly while this has been happening. Uh, Bloodscale and Viser, you guys enter the room about um, the the second potion in. Is there anything you would have wanted to do in that time? Sorry, I got carried away with narrative and forgot. I, uh, I make sure I let her know I want the fire scritch to be powdered so that if I throw the potion bottle, it will explode uh, into a... All right, all right. Very, very well. Um, and then so she um, she empties the vial back down onto um, this cloth, and then she uh, opens another section of the counter on the opposite side. And as she opens it up, there's just this small warmth that, that radiates out of it. And you see there's like this... this It's like a little stove, and she starts to like uh, run the bellows, and it heats up a little bit, and she places the... Um, the cloth across it it's like a, a heated drying rack and she closes it back up and then all right so then we should be able to powder that um uh so in a few uh, hours probably probably take until tomorrow that we can get that set up for you and uh oh and then uh, you look at the back of the room and and uh, vicer and blood scale have slipped in i wave oh, don't don't mind I'm... them they're with me I'm still standing there next to the, the screws that she told me to, to screw when the thing stops. And you, you have every about 10 to 15 minutes, you notice it starts okay. and you screw it down and you screw it down and you eventually it's getting to the point where it's it's because it, it started out like a, like a brick and you've been slowly pressing it down and it's it's about three quarters of the way crushed and there you've collected a bunch of this oil and it's in like one of those um, like 
it's a it folding into a big container um and you you see you've got about you're you're coming up on nearly a gallon of the oil cool from yeah a gallon from three pounds I, uh, no I sorry honestly thought i was you're just about standing there during all of this waiting for you to cue me to do something <laughs> no no you were you were um, i envisioned Uza just standing there waiting you're just standing there watching waiting and then <laughs> he looks up i'm helping and, and uh, you are you are you are harvest about uh, sorry not a, not a, like a gallon but like two quarts of the the oil from this this three pound block of bard spice. Um, Wave at them. Hey guys. Uh, they, she she kind of waves Wait, over. Man. So, with what I've already paid you for all of this. Oh, I asked my dear. Uh, as oh. I said earlier, I want to take as much supply as I can as you're willing to part with so that I can do this on my own on my travels uh, of course my dear um, well let's see if we're still uh, in business in a few days and then we'll we'll discuss it then I'll make sure that that happens <laughs> All right. uh, oh, uh, oh I'm so sorry you can you can Oh, you did an amazing job. And she comes over to you, Uza, and she's, like, looking down at the oil and everything. You are on top of this. Very, very nicely done. Um, and then uh, she, she kind of takes some of the oil, and she's like, Ah, this is this is what that mauling madness needed. Uh, this should help quite a bit. And she goes over, and she, she starts... Uh, she gathers just, like, a little bit out of a... She, pours, she, like, picks up the giant jug and pours a little bit into a smaller vial and heads off to start working on something as you guys are kind of catching up. Perfect. And then, uh, so she's like, "Yeah, they should be ready uh, well by tomorrow, hopefully." And then uh, I can work a little bit to hopefully make them ready by then. And then, um, make a pers make a n no, actually make another nature check with advantage, Zephyr. Nineteen, pretty good. Uh, all right. So, uh, with that, you're you're looking at her, and then as she smiles, you look again and you're like this bitch is a druid <laughs> <laughs> this bitch right here she's been a druid the whole time so she's a dwarven druid mm-hmm late twist I, uh, I uh I lean in I'm like so does Sylvanas guide your hand too oh Sylvanas guides many hands dear mine included of course <laughs> Ah, yes, yes. Uh, uh, it is one of the things, uh, I mean, it is one thing to be have a green thumb, quite another to grow these here. Uh, if you find a place, well, I hope you find uh, the piece of uh, the plants. I hope it finds you one day as well, as uh, it doesn't seem like the fire in your heart is ready for that. But a fire may stoke into a warm heart eventually. I think that will definitely help. Perfect. And uh, the rest of you, uh, hold on one second. Uh, how long has it been? Uh, it's it's getting about, you guys probably have about, at this point, half an hour left in seeming. Okay, so am I getting proficient in herbology yet, or? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, that was one of the things I was going to add just now. Yeah, so um, I will go ahead and add the proficiency for herbology into your character sheet. It'll be a herbalism kit, technically, is what the proficiency is. Okay, and I can't, like, up my nature skill until I level later, right? Um, it's something your character can work on in their, their downtime. It's going to take quite a lot of work, um, but yeah, okay. the next logical one would be when you level up. This is uh, going to be something that she's going to be working on. Perfect. And then uh, she... Uh, and as uh, is... Um, she she mentions the hearth. You look down, and she's holding out like um this pouch, and uh, she hands it over to you. It's an herbology kit, so you have one now. Yay! <laughs> cool, cool. Or herbalism kit, I should say. Ah. Herbalism. There we go. Um. And I dropped it into your stuff, so it's already there. Cool. All right, and then uh, so you guys half an hour left in seeming. Your potions quick, are. What do we head out? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say I wanna I wanna buy some healing potions. 
She's Perfect. Got any for sale? Oh, I um pass around some healing potions. I oh, give. I, I just want to buy I... some for the. Zephyr for the... already bought her out. Zephyr cleared oh, her out okay, already. Never mind, never mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but they're so being heads out. I hand two regular healing potions over to Vicer. Actually, I, I bought her out, so you can have these two. Great. Thank you. If anybody needs more, just let me know. Two, uh, they're just regular healing. Okay, hold on. So, last card is cashed. What? That's... Now the door guard were tearing the place apart. It was a real mess. Jesus, did did you know if uh, no, it, the was left? it was she's dark? Left. She's already she's already downstairs. Okay. Uh, we need to go the other way. We don't have much time in our forms, do we? We're really not, not too far from the guild, um, so we should be able to use that back entrance. Are we saying this all right in front of Helmata? That's why I'm being uh, kind of daggery about, about Helmata it. Helmata is, is working on stuff still. She's gone back. Um, you get the idea that there's still quite a lot of work to be done for these potions to be done in time. Did did I hear her say earlier, though, that maybe in a few days this place will be... This place lasts. Oh yeah, if uh, you, she was not being quiet then. She was saying that you know, maybe she could help out if they're you know still in business in a few days. I'm yep. gonna kind of go over to her real quick. Okay, uh, she's busily working on potions. She's um, checking on the the drying of the the the, the peppers. And she looks up. I was uh, Mister, and she kind of raises her brow. Did I ever come in here as blood? <laughs> I think I did. Uh yes, yeah, you did. All right, Zephyr trusts you, so I'm I'm just gonna be up front. Oh, very well. Also, just so you know, I'm not the best at talking with words. Ah, uh, me either. You remember that dragon guy that she was with? Hard to forget, big silver fellow. Yeah, that's actually me. Oh, Hi. well, that makes sense. And she like squints further, and she's like, oh. Uh, and she reaches out, and she kind of like, she goes to like. What would to, to like touch the orc nose, but your face comes out quite a bit further, and she accidentally ends up actually like booping your nose. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's some that's nice magic you have there, my friend. Yeah, we got a we got a weird halfling guy that's pretty good at that. Um, wow. Um, look. We know the sound's going to shit right now. Uh, yes. Well, depends on who you right. are, but for some, it is. We're, we're look. We're gonna try to stop it. I'm okay. going to complete shit. I approve. The Duragar, however, are just fucking everything up. They are kind of awful. Not but we could honestly use all the help we can get, which is kind of why she's doing this potion thing. Yes, yes, of course. She, she's explained a bit of what your intentions are. Yeah, I'm just saying we could use all the allies we can get, and we have quite a few of the other guild masters with us as well. Excellent. Well, that's what I like to hear. Um, so, unfortunately, if, if you wanted... I... Go ahead, sorry. Oh, I was just saying, unfortunately, uh, I, more than any other guild master, am tied to this place. And she gestures around to all of the plants and everything, and she's like, without these, I have no guild to be a master of. Oh, I'm, I'm not asking you to, like, leave or go anywhere. I'm giving you a, a good warning that Durgar are fucking shit up. Uh, and that if you want to join us in any way, shape, or form, we could use as many allies as possible and would do everything we can. Well, that is an encouraging message, and I appreciate it, my friend. I do what I can with my what limited capability I have. Well, may you... May the magic in your blood serve you as greatly as any of my potions might. She like kind of nods her head in like a little bow. Oh, oh, I don't think this is going to work. Because usually I can say a thing and then weird magic in my blood changes. It's weird. Oh, really? Well, I'll show you later if we all live. Hello. Well, no, well, and then she pulls a flask out of her um like her little robe thing. I think, like, well, to us living. And she unscrews it and takes a big hefty swig and hands it over. I will take a swig as well, because fuck it. Constitution saving throw. This is the good shit. That's fine. <laughs> My constitution <laughs> is fairly high. 14. 
you barely fail. faded right now. Uh, she's she didn't smoke any of the bard spice, but uh, so uh, okay. the world just gets a little swimmier as like you're like getting like this strange, quite a, like almost oh god, you're you're buzzed. You are buzzed off of a swig of alcohol. That's fine. Is it burning at all? Uh, no, it's it's this it's um. Let's see, hers would be Man. a. Uh, it's this kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> it's this weird combination of like, um, like it's it's definitely had honey added to it, but it has like this this nice like warm burn. Like it's it's like a it's like a like a brandy like a honeyed brandy. Um, so does is it something that seems like it would taste better chilled? No, it actually would taste better heated up. Damn. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna do anything fun then. <laughs> okay. I just hand it back a little shakily. She, she she winks at you and places it back in her robe. Okay, we gotta go. Like, now. Perfect. Yep, we gotta go. Amanda, I will take as many of those as we can make by tomorrow. Very well. Thank you for your help. Of course. And adios. We run out. <laughs> no, so you guys, um, are you guys just uh, bold facing? Are you stealthing? What are you guys doing? Um, we should let's... have enough time in the seeming to just kind of walk through town normally. Yeah, but let's just do the normal walk. Just in case, maybe? Why don't we walk boldly through alleyways? That way, if our seeming drops, we can immediately yeah. stealth. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so uh, you guys are, are making it through, and uh, you guys kind of start... Well, I'll go take some of Helmata's music away. Right, so Yeah, Helmata, get... Get your music out of here. Get, so, get out of here. It turns over, Helma. It's yeah, our turn. It's now. time for the our turn down here. Perfect. It's our time. <laughs> you fucking our time down here. God damn it. <laughs> Can we just go one session without the Goonie? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, all right, so you guys start making your way through the, the, the various alleys and stuff. And uh, as you, you're going through some, you notice there's figures sleeping in, in a few um they're covered in just a pile of blankets here and there, and then uh, there's Duogar at the entrance of many of the at the entrance of some of the alleys, and those alleys are perfectly cleared and cleaned out. Uh, a few Duogar, they go to like they start looking kind of sideways at you, but you they don't man they don't stop you. Um, as you guys are kind of making your way through, and uh, most of them, there's there's a few here and there that are. Um, that, uh, that are, are clear of, of any guards and everything. And uh, so you guys get, um, you know, you're getting about 200, you're about 100 feet away from where you need to go. And uh, as you guys look, uh, make a perception check. All right. I can do those. Huh. Damn, I thought Mike was mine for a second. <laughs> my rolls have been so bad. It's okay. You got the, you got the one that counted. Uh, you got yeah. them when they counted because those really counted um so as you guys are kind of looking around um uza you notice first that the seeming is starting to wear off you'll see oh. um I'm gonna shove whoever is starting to turn into a shadowy corner perfect right. Right. i just look like a dwarf though still right yeah. like i don't you just look like a dwarf right? no um okay. but uh blood scale is his skin is starting to turn white and you see his uh uh, dragon form starting to emerge from the illusion as the illusion starting to fade. Ba, 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 ba. Shit, sorry. I and... made it le Okay. Uh, we're in a back alley, right? Like, yeah. Uh, I'm going to do a quick check around before I do that. I okay. Think. Who do you want to turn <laughs> in? Okay, so you look around. You uh, don't You don't notice any yes, guards or anything Jesus. close? Yeah. Then, somebody, um, Jess. Who are you I, turning? Uh, uh, Bloodscale. Let's go. And then uh, as you pull him aside, Bloodscale vanishes. And you see behind, standing behind him is the dwarvish form of Vicer. Who I can still out. feel him, though, right? Yeah, you can still feel him. He's not gone. Like... Okay. <laughs> oh, thank God. Okay. Um, How far are we from, from So entrance? now the... So um, Uza, his, his seeming has now dropped, and uh, Zephyr how, seeming has how dropped. How far are we from the 100, 100 well... feet. 100 feet? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab onto um, uh, Bloodscale since he's the biggest and most obvious. I'm invisible. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm holding onto you, and I'm like, all right, get ready. We're gonna teleport right to the entrance. Because I why? 
But why teleport me when you can teleport somebody who can be seen? Like Oza. Only, can you cover a hundred feet in one m minute? Yes. Oh, yeah. Easily. So he can All cover right. that in about well four right, so turns. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Um, who else? Who else is gonna change back? Uh, so me you see, Zephyr. yeah, Zephyr. Both of them. Gra yeah. Grab Zephyr. Zephyr. No, Zephyr, become a cat. Shape change. Yeah, I'll shape change. All right, then I'm gonna grab Uza. And oh wait, uh, what about what about um, Ratman? Mes Mesno still looks like a dwarf. He can make himself. He has alter self. Like He's fine. Ah, great. Then we're gonna dimension door right to the entrance. You guys pop right over the entrance as you see uh, the dwarvish form of um, of Mesnos. Uh, I what did you change into, um, Zephyr? Uh, cat. Cat. Uh, you see the the dwarvish form of Mesnos kind of, um, you know, still holding his cloak and arms crossed, just kind of start walking across, and you notice a, a cat on his shoulder as he makes his way across, and then. Uh, that's all you would see. And then, uh, so uh, you guys make your way. Well, let's see. Yep. You guys make your way safely across the alley as you, uh, um, not, you seemingly go unnoticed uh, as you, and then, um, you make your way over to, uh, ready at the trap door. I'm going to take a look around before I enter the, the thing. Perfect. And uh, looking around, um, you see there's a, a few Duragar uh, that pass the um, the entrance to the alleyway every now and then. One stops and looks at you guys for a second, and then just shakes his head and kind of starts moving around. Um, you get the idea that he didn't notice you, but he just saw everybody else because he rolled a one on his perception. Nice. Um, <laughs> um, then uh, top left, bottom right, top right, do it again. Perfect. It opens. Simon says. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so and it it it, it slides open, and um, you guys hop down into the sewers, and you press the lever. <laughs> you are back on your way to seeing uh, to Rash's hideout. Um, you pull out. Do you, uh, do you just want to make your way there? How do you want to? Yeah, where the uh, traps are right. Oh yeah, traps. Um, I'm gonna refer to my map. Perfect. You pull out your map. And uh, double check those traps. And it's super dark in here. Uh, oh, I'm gonna switch out to my other goggles. Perfect. All right. So, oh, that's right. No, you still have those. No, yeah. Okay. No, you swapped out. So I, 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 I have. I've got my my fancy ones attuned. I just gotcha. got two sets on, and I'm just. Switching. That's right. All right. So as you switch over, you kind of look at it and you trace it. Um, You've done this a couple times now, so uh, this one you won't have to make a check for. You you got everybody past the traps and everything after you, um, and uh, you guys kind of make your way back into Rashildalan's, uh pit, where you hear there's just a bunch of bustling as people are working on things. Um, you see... Real quick, Ty. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Before we get in there, like, when, once we're safe, like, outside the door, I'm going to put take the, the, the night vision goggles, and I'm going to put them in my pack. Perfect. Okay. So you, you store your night vision goggles, and then uh, you guys make your way into the uh, the Shildon's pit, and you you hear the the clanging as as people are working on uh, metallurgy. You hear uh, the sounds of arcane chanting as the two um, as uh, the the two halflings are, are well the gnome and the halfling they're not both halflings um, are, are standing over a copper pot chanting something, and uh, that's where we're going to go ahead and wrap up tonight. Woo! All right. So, Smith had to get that in there before, uh, you know, freaking uh, Gimzit goes seeing his property on my face. <laughs> okay. Fine. Have uh, robbed me of my fun, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> that dude has tried. His, that dude has caught me trying to steal every other thing. I'm getting this. <laughs> this is mine. My map. Yeah, this is right. mine. Yeah, this is mine. <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, great session, everybody. Uh, did you guys have any questions? Everything pretty clear? Um, was it fun yeah. still? No. It yeah, was yeah. awesome. Time? Perfect. All right, cool. So, and I'll... To recall, I gave, like, 300 gold to her, right? Yep. Yeah, it must okay. be nice to be rich. It was. All right, so... Um... Ah! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, that perfect. Was cat. That was adorable. All right, so oh, we'll go ahead and <laughs> wrap the stream up here. Uh, say goodbye to the nice people. Wrinkles.
Bye, everybody. Bye, nice Bye. people. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Get out of here, you people watching this. Go on. Well, now we're going to lose. Streamers. Turn in <laughs> next week to see what exciting stuff is going to happen. Oh, it's sure. Just, don't waste see what they're going to do with three pounds of Bart Spice next week. <laughs> see <you. laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>